Get it, go get it, go hard for the U, we go harder than you. Getting it popping, two one gun salute. Shot at them boys, football a hoop. Know we the truth, Miami to you. Orange and green, I'm a rep for the team, but you know what I bleed. FCMG. Got my game face, my cane shades like I'm bold nose and D-Nasty. Game time and I'm Duke Johnson. I run the ball, you don't do nothing. So I like a drum line when I touch down. Alumni all in the crowd, we two up, two stop. Now everybody throwing them U's up. Yeah, you up. Look at what we do up. Damien, what's going on? Great day today. Wow, what a great day. Well, great day for, for, for to be a Miami Hurricane fan. Great day to be a Kane Shades. Oh, man, what a great day. And we got Tommy Beer back. Tommy, what's going on? What's going on, fellas? Oh, uh, man, what's going on, Tommy? Tommy, we miss you, man. Much. How was just it? Sitting you up here in this just sitting here in this cold damn weather and waiting for the other snowstorm to come through. Another damn one? No, I gotta get out of this area. We need to come to Florida. Man. Bring your ass to Florida. But hey, how to start off the day? New wire receiver coach, Taylor Summerfield, Summerfield and new tight end coach, Steven Field. What do you think about these hires, Tommy? Love it. Hopefully the wide receiver, the only thing is, I just hope the wide receivers can still block downfield like they are known for. And everything. And they can hopefully they can catch the damn ball. Wow. And then, <laughs> go ahead. Hey, uh, I'm looking at the new screen, the, the photo that I did. I'm looking at it because it looks different on the TV screen. Hey, Tommy Beard, uh, you're, you're you're on the, the the on the on the YouTube our channel. You're on the front cover of of, of the screen. Uh, you got a uh, Vic there holding the pool stick. You got uh, a bow with the guard with the hat. <laughs> you got you're there. It's good, man. I kind of messed up on the edit a little bit. I got to replace it. I'm just looking at my work right right now. But that's badass. I like the I can want to be up on the TV and see what it looks like. I like the one. Yeah, yeah. I messed up a little bit with the with the soprano because that's really like the sopranos when I put our face over the sopranos. Like I think I kind of I could do a little bit better. I kind of messed up there, but the, to the left, that that's badass to the left right there. It is. But hey, hey, how about the, the fucking Miami Herald now? I think, I think they must kill them to have to give us some props here, huh? Huh? Oh yeah. Huh? Well, you know what? To be fair, I don't think they. I don't think Barry Jackson knew who we were, though. We really didn't. Hmm. Maybe he did. But they had. Well, let everyone know problems. what happened. No one believed us. Tell up the tweet we put out. Oh, they no one believed us. People, people were people questioning us. They're, They're questioning us, saying, "Oh man, fake, fake news, news, all the bullshit." bullshit they said they don't believe us. And you know what the sad thing is? We've been doing this for a year now. It's just, it's, I think about, about two or three weeks, people are really starting to make notice. We've been doing this for a good year. Yeah. The same stuff, same sources. We've been, we've been but, putting in work for no, a year now. The other, the other night, night, I said, someone asked me who do you want to be the tight end coach, and I said, I wanted to be Stephen Field. I said, man, he's a great recruiter. I'd love to get him. Boy, I, I can't believe it. But on the bad news is, our boy uh, Cooney. Cooney talking about leaving. Uh, what did it say? Um, Oregon, Louisville, and Florida State have all contacted him. I think offered two. I mean, man, it sucks. When probably gonna lose him. Time to think about that. Did you Did you see the news on Jerry Williams that he that supposedly his father come out and said that he was staying no matter if Mark, even though Mark A um committed. Yeah, yeah, I saw the news on that. Okay, what's going on with Cooney, though? Talk about Cooney, Tom. Cooney, I, I mean, everything I'm saying, I mean, with Oregon and all these other, I mean, we got to pay the man. You got to keep him here, especially if he's the reason, if he did the work on getting Jeff Thomas to come back. Yeah, yeah but with everything I heard, everything I heard with Jeff Thomas, he was going his way to Illinois. 
But what I heard was I heard the reason he's so upset is not that he did not get the tight tight end wide receiver job. The reason I heard he's so upset is because they didn't even give him an interview and they promised him an interview. And that is what has messed up the whole um you know the whole relationship was they promised him an interview. Wow. And they did not give him that's, wow. that's wrong. That's wrong. I'm sorry, if you have promised somebody something they at least at least live up to it. Not only that, he's been holding it down. I mean, you had no offensive staff at all. And this guy was holding it down. I mean, mm-hmm. he went to Mississippi. I, I know they they have parted ways now with the public kid, but he went up down to Mississippi and got him a seventh official visit. He went and got, uh, you know, went and got um, Thomas. This guy has been working his ass off, man, ass off, yeah. with no offense to that. Wow, not even, not even an interview. Jesus. Nope. That's what I heard, man. Not even an interview. It's crazy. I bet they would have interviewed him, and then you know, maybe they would have interviewed him. And said, hey, we're, we're going with this guy instead of you because he has a little bit more um, uh, experience, you know, something. something. But, but hey, hey, maybe, hey, hey we're, we're going to give you a spot in the future. Just, just keep working hard. hard. If they, they would have done, done that, 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 that would have been good, man. Wow. And Jeff Jeff says, they think they can convince him to stay. I don't think he's going to stay. I think he's going to stay. You think enough is enough? Yeah, enough is enough, huh? I think there's enough. I think there's enough. I think you got. Yeah. Or, I, I, if, if I, I had to pick, I think I'd go to Oregon. Oregon. I think. I think, uh, I, I think, I think we'll go Crystal Ball. Ball. But then well, again, Louisville, Louisville has, has that head, head recruiting job. job over. Over. Now that he left, left, he can get that, that job, job, or he can go to Oregon. Oregon. But we'll, we'll see what's up. Oh um, yeah, he could go to Florida State. Oh, uh, well, let's get back. Let's get back to the events that transpired as far as the wide receiver coach. No one believes us. We put it out. Mm-hmm. We put the tweet out. Put it out. Well, yeah. Put it out. Put it out. We had to tie in information too, but we saw, you know, we went with the, we went with the wide receiver guy. So yeah. we we'll put it out there. No one believed us. They remember you. Remember we talked to each other. We're like, man, dude, if this is mm-hmm. wrong. We are gonna get fucking hammered. Remember we talking about that? Yeah, yeah. I, I was dude. like, you know what? If we're wrong about this. It's finito. It's pretty much a wrap. There's no coming back from this. <laughs> I don't th- this was a big, it was a big gamble to, to put it out. But you know what? I never doubted the people who work for us, the people really out there busting their heads for us, man. I said, you know what? It's, it's time. You know, you got to put trust, trust in people sometimes. I said, you know what? We're going with it. Boom. Mm. How about we got, now? We got our king shades. Hey, we, you don't know. We got our cane shaped hey. ninjas out there. Hey, you know, Damien. They're hey, always Damien. at the 7 to 7. We got our cane shaped ninjas out there. They're at the 707s. You don't know who they are, but they're out there. Our, our cane our cane shaped 7 our ninjas are out there. Hmm. Oh, by the way, though, hmm. I told you we beat Wake Forest in basketball. Yeah, I know. I know. On Saturday. You were right about that. Hey, Damien, hey, hey, you'll go behind the scenes to see if I'm echoing. They're saying I'm echoing. I'm messing with the buttons, but I can't. Okay, all right. I'm going to check it out right now. I can't tell if it's still echoing or not. Is it still echoing? People in the box, the comments. Okay, hold on. Let me let me turn this down. Hold on. How about now? And am I still coming in loud? I'm trying to make it to where the callers are coming in loud. All right, good. What is it? Okay, everyone says it's good now. Oh, uh, we got some seven on. Well, what we're gonna start doing now? Uh, let you guys know. Uh, we're gonna start uh, having some of these since seven on seven is about the season is about to start up. Oh, uh, we're gonna start having some of these uh, coaches from the seven on seven teams come on, talk to them, ask them about the players they got, uh, what's their expectations for this upcoming seven on seven season, and uh, get you guys familiar with these seven on seven teams. And some of them like South Florida Express. Uh, They'll be coming up first, Brett Goats. He's coming on at 7 o'clock. That team right there is loaded with talent, and it's good to hear what these guys got to say about, about these guys. Then at 7.30, I know he is uh, a Seminole, 
Adrian McPherson, probably one of the greatest athletes ever in the state of Florida, Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball. He runs the Air 5 program. Great program over there at Bradenton. He'll be on to come talk about his team. And then we'll probably have a Gator on, Kiwan Radcliffe. He'll come on and probably talk about the Rat Pack, his 7 on 7 team. Uh, another good one, Adidas sponsors. Like, uh, so it's going to be, we're going to start getting these, uh, let you guys learn about these 7 on 7 programs that are going around the whole country. And plus, it'll help you guys learn some of these players and all that. But wow. Hey, uh, Tommy. Tommy, you yeah. there? Yeah, uh, Bo, yes. you're going to have to, it's, it's going in and now you're going to have to adjust it just a little bit. Adjust, like, go ahead and look at the mixer and just low. I think you need to lower it just a little bit, but there, there is an echo, though. Hold on. Echo. How about now? All uh, right, let me check it out. Uh, it's a comment section. Uh, they uh, say comment you go. Ahead, check it out. Hold on. Is it good now? Echo. Not now. Uncle Joe says echo. Man, I wish I could fucking tell. Better. They say better. Man, what is going on tonight? So, Tommy. Yeah. Yep. Love experience says good. There we go. Big Kane says yes, echo. Is it still an echo or not? What's going on? Man, fuck. Let me fix this. I'm trying to mess with this stuff before we get our interview coming on here. Sorry about the delay, people. All right, let me fix it here. Let me try to fix it. Um, How about now? Is it doing now? Man. Are we good now or what? It should be good. I changed the settings. What's up, Dennis? There it is. There you go. I had to mess with this. I had a setting had somehow adjusted. My bad. It was in the computer system. Thank you, guys. I'm glad it's better. Am I coming in clear enough, loud enough? Tommy, oh, so how's yeah. the weather been? I see you've, you you got your phone back on. I know you couldn't leave the house. Right. Man. Dude, the roads were full of ice. So, Tommy, we haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, Jalen Hurts picking up a home? Doesn't surprise me. Because I told you, the what was it, two days before? That it, the talk that I'm getting was Oklahoma, mm. and in, in everything, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know what they said to him, what they, but he said something. Really? I don't. What? What was? I mean, kind of aggravating in a way that he didn't want to follow his uh, quarterback coach. Yeah. Did they not get along? Did Oklahoma promised him something. I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens, what the Ratney kid does now that was coming in. Really? Are they going to play him both? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. that's going to be interesting, especially if what you said is true, that they promised this kid the starting job. Who? The Ratley kid that's coming in. I mean, I, I'm... <laughs> the Ratley kid. What kid is this? Remember the kid that what was it? The arm, the army kid that played in the army that they had coming in. The first. Oh, first Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler. It, R yeah. Rattler. They told no. They told they told him that they were not going to take another quarterback and not a grant grad transfer. What they told him. 
going to be very interesting. Is he open? I mean, he can open his recruitment because he already signed. Yeah, I know. He already signed. I know. But they lied to him. So, I mean. <laughs> they lied to him. Yeah, everyone, hit the like button. Hit the follow. Hit the notification. And when we go on, you'll get alerted. Go follow us on uh, Twitter. And all that. We've got Brett. I can't. I can't wait to find out with Mark this whole thing with Mark Hay if he's gonna be eligible like he's trying to get. I know, I know. Got Brett Goat. How do you say his name? How, wait, how how would you pronounce G O E T Z? Is it Goats? Is that how you pronounce that? Uh, I would think. Yeah, I would think too. I don't like getting people's names wrong. He runs the seven on seven. I do it a lot. He runs seven on seven over there at Southport Express, and they got tons of talent. They were the national championship team last year. All that, man. What do you, uh, Tommy? Yeah. How about are you getting more excited day by day or what? Yep, I've already booked my room for the pit game, and was. In the process of doing the Notre Dame, or not Notre Dame, but the uh, Duke game. Because we pulled early, so the prices aren't as, as much. But Pittsburgh is outrageous up there for hotel rooms right now. So I'm actually to stay on the outskirts of Pittsburgh and make the rest of the drive on that Saturday. Really? What, you going to Pittsburgh? Yep, I'm going to the Pittsburgh game and probably do the Duke game. Really? Yep. So I got to get, get me a King Shades shirt, and I'll rep the King Shades during that week. Yeah, we're trying to find out. Hopefully, we'll find out tomorrow about the shirts and all that. But, man, I'm Dude, fired I wear... up right now from the hires, man. I can't I'm just, still on the fence. I'm still on the fence for the Florida game. Oh man, come on! That's the biggest game, man. I'd like to do Florida. I like to do the Florida and the Florida State. Mm. Yeah, I agree. But man, can you believe this? I mean. What do what, what, what you think about the staff in general, the offensive staff? Are, are you happy with this staff and what we got here? Yeah, I'll give it a chance. I mean, it's all you can do. See what happens. I mean, I don't – I'm not going to put expectations really high because it is going to be a new system. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be better than what the hell we had last year. Oh, how about Darius Washington? Uh, was it Washington? I think it's his name. The He's coming for a visit this weekend. It's, it's another, they're giving him another official because he's got a new head coach. I mean, I just don't know. Can we flip this guy or what? Mississippi commit? This whole Twitter is full of Mississippi Mississippi State. He's committed. Can, can we, we flip see. him? It'd be nice. It would be nice. We need we need some more linemen, man, don't you think? Yeah. Come on, go. A couple guards. <laughs> Need some deep tackles. Yes. I mean, some... probably need probably needed another pass rusher losing Joe Jackson. Mm -hmm. Here he is. So hold on, I got Brett. What's going on? Hey guys, how you doing? Great, man. Get fired up. Seven on seven season's about to start. You guys are the reigning national champions. What, what, what's it? What, what do you guys got going on this year? Well, we have our showcase slash tryout tomorrow. I mean, this uh, this weekend, Saturday, we'll have the showcase, and uh, you know, usually get two, three hundred kids out there. And then uh, on Sunday, we'll pick uh, about fifty or sixty kids from Saturday and have them come try out on Sunday. So, uh, gonna be a lot of meetings out there covering these kids, and uh, should be a great weekend. How hard is it to pick? How many kids do you guys pick Barely. out of these three hundred? <laughs> It's it's really hard to pick. I mean, I, we started a little late this weekend for a few reasons. I mean, for uh, this season, for uh, 
couple reasons, but we, uh, you know, there's a couple tournaments coming up, but we really want to get these kids picked quickly. Um, it's tough, though. I mean, we have a lot of coaches out there looking. Mm-hmm. We have a few returning guys from last year that we know that could play. And uh, we're just going to have to make it quick and think on to play and, you know, pick a team. But we have a 15U team, we have a varsity team, and we have a sophomore team. So, um, yeah, we're going to – you know, we're going to split them up Saturday and into their age brackets and see what we have. Hey, well, what's it like, you know, coaching a team with so much talent you guys have? I mean, last year, I think you're, I mean, everyone was had a Miami offer, correct? Your whole secondary. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's fun. I mean, listen, it's, you know, it, you can have all these great players, but you have to have good chemistry. We have great players every year. And it doesn't mean we win every tournament or every game. And, you know what? we got to have the right chemistry. Last year's team was just unbelievable. It just came together. And the guys were just really wanted to win and wanted to be a part of the Express and knew, I mean, knew what kind of exposure you get from winning and from playing on these big stages of these tournaments. So hopefully this year we have the same type of kids that want to win and want to compete, and uh, hopefully our chemistry will be right. But we have great coaches as well that – you know, try to put everything together, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good wins this year. You know, our boy Ricky, he said that last year's team was the greatest team ever. Do you agree with that? I, You know what? I'm going to have to say yes. Um, I do agree with Ricky. I, um, Our third team was really, really – I always thought the third team was the best team um, until this year. I, I just love the way these kids – wanted to win and wanted to be together. And uh, we, you know, the kids are really close. So they all become really close. In fact, we have like a group chat with the 22 kids that went to LA last year and won. And every day they're in there talking about recruiting or their games or whatever it is. And these guys just came together as a unit and played really, really well. And I, I, I kind of agree with Ricky. I think that might've been our best team. How long have you been running the Southwood Express? This will be our 12th year. And this is the best team, better than when they had Duke. You guys had Duke Johnson and all those guys? Yeah, I just think overall, the way this team played, uh, I would say, I mean, listen, every year we have those type of games. So um, the year that we won the national championship before, we had Teddy Bridgewater, a quarterback, and Ryan Shazier, a linebacker, and Jeremy Cash, playing linebacker, and uh, – Gerard Holloman, who ended up winning the Thorpe Award at Louisville. Andrew Johnson from Louisville. Wayne, uh, who else was on that team? Um, uh, we had, I mean, that team was loaded, loaded. Uh, Tracy Howard was on that team. But um, I would say this year, I, I just the way these guys played and quarterback was great. Nick Scalzo did a great job at quarterback. You know, I really think that this team and, – and think about the offensive power we had. I mean, with Frank Latson and Dunmore and – Corey Brooks was young, but just it's going to be a great player. And, uh, you know, Marcus Fleming. I mean, just, just so many weapons. It was amazing. I see Ja'Cory Brooks is starting to get offers from everyone right now. Yeah, Ja'Cory, so he played on a 15-year team the first year with us. And then last year, he was sort of on our sophomore team. And then we brought him to L.A. Uh, we went in some more height and receiver. And he's really become – you know, I mean, just a really, really good player, and uh, we're excited to um, see him out there Saturday. I, I think a lot of people will agree that he's probably one of the top receivers, if not in the state, but nationally. I mean, he's going to be a great one. So a couple of weeks, you got the pylon tournament coming up. Are you guys going to be out there, Orlando? Yeah, we should be. You know, if, uh, if everything goes right this weekend and we get our team together, then, yeah, we'll go out to pylon, yeah. What, what, what's the bigger championship, the NFA or the pylon? Because last year they did it on the same damn weekend, which didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, well, we don't – you know what? I, I think – well, first of all, the summer championships mm-hmm. are really – mean. at this point, they don't really mean anything anymore. I mean, we were at – we our 15U went to the NFA one at IMG, and – like, and, you know, our, it was, you know, the, the older, the varsity level groups, there was very few good teams. None of the good Florida teams went. We mm-hmm. didn't go. The Fire didn't go. Um, um, Pro Impact didn't go. Uh, or, uh, Rat Pack didn't go. So 
the, at this point, and this started happening a few years ago, in the summer, all the good guys, all the good players that are on these teams are traveling, going to camps, visiting schools. So we kind of hang it up right after, um, right after we're done in April. We're pretty much done at the varsity level for seven on seven. So most of the great teams with all the good players for seven on seven are usually happening, you know, from now up until through spring. So, you know, we, when we went to the Adidas championship, the national championship in LA, you know, they had all the top quarterbacks in the country were there um, on one team or the other and all the best players. So all the years we've been doing this, I, I think that was the most loaded. Uh, and I, and I read that from so many of the reporters that were there, probably the most loaded group of teams that we've ever had in one place for seven on seven. So you guys are Adidas sponsored? We are, yes. Oh, that's big time. How, yeah. yeah. How, how, how did you get to work that? Or have you guys been Adidas since day one, or were you with another brand? No, no. We've had other deals. I mean, we had Under Armour. We had another company called Evo Shield. And, uh, you know, sort of a mutual thing. Adidas was kind of, uh, starting to get into seven on seven or interested. I happen to somebody I know connected me with somebody there and, uh, and, uh, we met and, uh, you know, I kind of told them what we are, who we are and what we do and how we've done it. And, uh, they loved it and they uh, offered to sponsor us. And I think we're going into our third, fourth year of Adidas sponsorship now. They've been great, unbelievable partners. I mean, just, they're great, great to work with. Um, and it's been a it's been a good match. Is the national championship in Las Vegas this year, or is it back in LA? Well, for the Adidas one, it's in Tampa this year. So now they're on the East Coast and going to be sort of in our backyard. So they'll be in Tampa this year for the nationals, um, and then probably next year they'll go back out west again. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this year for the Adidas one, the Pylon one, I don't know where they're doing their national at. Um, but again, the Nat, like Adidas does their nationals in the spring. So it just, it's just, to me, it's just better competition. It's just the summer, these, you know, the good teams can't get the good players to come anymore for the yeah. summer. They're all, all the kids are traveling. Yeah, I agree. Cause after spring football, they, you know, they start going back with their team and their, their real teams. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, the, the, one of the best tournaments, one of the best, you know, group of, um, one of the best tournaments I ever went to over the years was the IMG used to have the Southeast seven on seven uh, championship, which was usually in, you know, let's say March, I think it was. And those were all the best teams in the Southeast. So, I mean, talent wise, it was ridiculous. And it was great teams, great players, and even pylons. That's, you know, the pylon. Uh, they do the regional also in, um, you know, in, in, you know, usually Tampa or Orlando or wherever. I mean, you know, there's usually some great teams and great players there as well. But when you get into the summer, it just doesn't work anymore at the varsity level. Yeah, I went to the, um, the, the IMG one a few, maybe four years ago. And then they, they had their own team back then. Now they don't have their own team anymore. And Randy Moss yeah. grew up with his own team. I mean, it was crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, again, it's changed. I mean, we were there this summer with our 15U team that actually won the national championship. And uh, we were watching, we were out there watching the varsity level teams. And uh, man, I, I mean, it was really, there was maybe one or two decent teams and that was it. And I heard it was the same thing for Pylon, you know, in the summer. So uh, yeah, again, we, we, we hang it up for the varsity level right after uh, we're done in April. And kids go back you know just really can't get enough quality team players to to compete in the summer anymore you do you think this year's team could be better than last year's team <laughs> it's going to be hard to top last year's team but uh you know from what i hear is he was coming out and some of the guys that uh, you know we got out there and you know we usually know maybe half the team that we think we'll have and then you know we're looking for other guys so i think um you know, I, I think there's going to be uh, – I think we'll have – you know, maybe, hopefully. I think on offense, um, you know, I keep hearing a lot of good offensive players coming out. Defensively, I mean, we're going to find guys. I mean, Henry Gray will come back, and Derek Wingo will come back. Uh, but we have several other spots to fill, so we got to go find those guys.
How about a quarterback? Do you guys have an idea at quarterback? There's a couple of real, you know what? We've had um, a couple of these free open run camps, and uh, we've seen some really good guys out there. Um, our 15 new guys coming back and going to try to compete for the varsity spot, and that's Nick Viadio from U School. And uh, as a uh, young man that just transferred from Hialeah to Chaminade that looked really good um, at these camps. And uh, I- I'm sure there's several others. I mean, hopefully we'll find some good ones. Do you guys go one quarterback or do you guys do that rotating thing? I, the rotating thing I do not like. I agree. We <laughs> So we, we, we used to do two, and it just becomes an issue. And um, – I, I, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do it this year. Um, but the one thing I do know is that the, if we have two quarterbacks on that team, the one guy, one of those guys is going to be the main guy that's going to play most. So I, the rotation has hurt us in the past and probably don't want to do it as much as we used to. Who's the greatest quarterback you all have? Is it Bridgewater? Yeah, Bridgewater, I would say Bridgewater. But, um, hey, Geno Smith was awesome. Oh, yeah, Geno Smith, Smith too? Our, he was our first quarterback the first year, and his backup on that first SFE team was Brandon Doughty, who was the seventh-round pick by the Dolphins last year hmm. out of Western Kentucky. So we had both those guys at quarterback. And, by the way, that was that year we rotated in the championship and lost because – we didn't let Gino get into a flow, and Brandon. We gave Brandon a lot of reps. And Brandon turned out to be a great player, but he was young. And um, I think um, I, you know Teddy was amazing. See, when we had Gino, we only had one tournament back then. We had four practices, one tournament in the fifth week, and then we were done. So we, you know, watching Gino in practice was unbelievable. I mean, the guy, the way the guy threw the ball was just different than all the other quarterbacks, but. Teddy was unreal. Hey, Sean White was fantastic. Um, the quarterback from U School oh, uh, that ended up going to Auburn. I mean, he was unbelievable for us. And, um, you know, we've had some really good ones. Uh, Scalzo last year was really good for us, too. So, much, yeah, we've seen some good ones. How much has this sport grown since you first started? Yes. Well, we just started. We were the only team doing it. Um, Somebody called me and asked me if I wanted to put together a team um, for a tournament in Tampa. That was that first year team with Geno Smith. And, you know, when I, I said, well, who do you want on the team? I, I, are they high school teams? He said, well, they'll probably be most of high school teams this year, but whatever you want to do. And I said, well, I would love to do an all-star team with all the top players down here. And he said, fine, do it. So what happened was we started practicing and – I don't know how these reporters found out about our practices, but, you know, for the reporters, they had all the top they had the top 25 players in Gator Broward in one spot every week. And they were able to come there and cover all these kids and talk to them. So we got a ton of press that first year. And everybody started reading these stories about South Florida Express. And it just, I guess it gained some traction going into the next year. People started doing it. And then year by year, it was just, you know, people, just more and more teams came. And then I think in the third or fourth year, uh, you know, we had some other teams down here in South Florida that started. So now there's, I mean, God, there are teams everywhere in every state and even down here. I mean, South Florida, there's tons of teams. It's amazing. It's great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So many. You got Cam Newton with his team in Georgia. He's pretty much like y'all, but he, has, he takes the whole state to just try to compete. Yeah, I mean, you have Deion Sanders, I heard, is doing a team out of Dallas now. And I, I mean, it's become – it's huge. And it's – you know, it's it's not – obviously, it's not the same as tackle football, but it's a great sport within itself. I mean, it's a short game, very little room for error, and the games are exciting. I mean, they – you know, some – I mean, we've had some amazing teams that have lost teams that you wouldn't know one guy on that other team. So, you know, our quarterback comes in, throws one interception – the other team gets points. They get the ball. And if they score right away, you know, now we're down 9, 10, nothing. And we got to come back in a short amount of time. So the game is, it's exciting. It's fast. It's, uh, again, there's no room for error. And it's, uh, it's really become a really great sport. You know what else I've seen? I've seen like 12 under and 10 under some of these little kids. And these little kids yeah. are catching the ball. 
Like, I, I, when I was a kid, there's no way anyone was catching the ball like this. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we actually – um, we have uh, – one of our coaches started a 13 and a 14 U team for the Express, which I should have mentioned earlier, but uh, it's our first year doing it. And I went out to their tryout twice, and uh, I couldn't even believe the talent on these kids. I, 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 wow, I was in awe of what these kids could do at that age. Yeah, so crazy. you're right. And I think the seven on seven has really helped develop kids and give kids confidence. And uh, I've seen a lot of kids come out to our team that weren't, you know, they might've been great players, but they didn't have the names out there, you know, coming out and realizing they can hang with the big boys. You know, they became great, you know, become a lot more confident, which has really helped their games. And I mean, we, you know, hopefully we have, you know, I, I mean, I know we have great coaches on our team that have really helped these kids. And I think a lot of ways, with whether it's technique or coverage or whatever it is, it's really been great. Yeah, well, hey, uh, Brett, thanks for calling us, man, giving us your time, and uh, best of luck. And I'll probably see you out there at Pylon. I think I'm going to go out there and check it out again, as I always do. Okay, great. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Call me anytime. I'd be All happy right. to be on. All right, appreciate it, man. Tell Ricky I said what's up. I definitely will. No problem. Thanks. There he is, South Florida Express, number one team in the nation. <laughs> Loaded with talent they got. Tommy? You there? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that South Florida Express team, man? Like, every kid's got, like, Miami, Florida State. I mean, every offer. Is that unreal or what? Yeah. Man. I mean, no wonder they're not. No wonder they keep winning it every time. Did you hear some of the names he was mentioning off? Like, Rick, Duke Johnson and Geno Smith and Teddy Bridgewater. I'm like, Ro, uh, what's his name for the Steelers? Rogier. Man, they had loaded. We've got the comment section going on. Is Bogle flipping from Bama to Miami? I do not know. What do, what's your guess on this, Tommy? You got a flip? You see a flip coming? I mean, if you go by DJ Dallas, yeah. I mean, did you see the, the uh, tweet he put out yesterday with the uh, – I don't know what you want to call it, that Olympic thing where he was flipping. Yes. I mean, who knows? Man, I don't know. I, I, it, I can't. It's hard to judge who he's talking about when he does that. You know? Is, true. He, is he talking about Bogle? Well, then you saw on Instagram, Coach Diaz puts out the, the same picture that um, Bogle has, you know, without the of, the of the ocean, looking at the buildings. He puts the right. same picture out. It's I don't know. Right, with all the teams in the ocean. Yeah, and then he did his with just a, no no teams out there. So I'm like, what does that mean? It means he's looking at the city of Miami. I don't know, man. I gotta say, Diaz is a good troll. He's good at trolling and he's good at keeping the info in house. He hasn't been able to do that. I have noticed uh, Diaz puts out the, a tweet and everybody loses their mind on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Really? You ain't see that? Who, I mean, my God, even with the whole Jeff Thomas. Oh yeah. Man. I mean, he put he put Jeff Thomas. I mean, he put out the the her, the five the category five tweet out. Everybody lost their mind. Then he put out the tweet with Prince with the four. And I kept. I was like, my God, you all losing your mind over nothing right now. What was it? What did you think? What was your reaction to Jeff Thomas? Were Were you happy we got him back? Yeah, only if he puts in actually really wants to be here and puts in the work. Because we have seen Jeff Tom what Jeff Thomas does if he doesn't get his way. He's a beast. I mean, you can't you got to admit the kid can play football. He is a beast, and he, we need him. I mean, think about it. The last time we seen him on the field was the punt return against Virginia Tech. Mm. And I don't think he was on the field again. Dude, that dude can play. How about LSU? He was the best player on the field against LSU. Them first four games of the year, he was the best player on the field. Yeah. I mean, now look at some of the catches he made the same first year. With the one-handed catch and falling out of bounds, and mm. <laughs> so he. I know this much: we got a we got a deep threat. 
We can just have an offensive line and a quarter and see who we got at quarterback. We can throw the ball deep down to him. We got a deep threat. I know. What's up, Birdman? But um, Shahid Bashir says, who's better, Judy or JT4? Oh, man, it's Judy, man. Tommy, who do you think is better, man? I'm going with you, Judy. Judy's bigger. I remember, yeah. I remember watching him 7-on-7. Seven seven. He played, he played Florida Fire. He's a freaking beast. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe he was that fast. With that size. It is, let's see. So he says he's got JT4. Yeah, you're being a hurricane bias, man. Bias. Thomas is the second best receiver we have had in the last four years. Who's the first? Who was better than JT4 in the last four years? What receiver have we had? Did you see Calvin um, Richardson? Amar? Mm-hmm. I mean, is he counting him? Because I don't know who else he's talking about. I'm talking about Barry Barrios. Is Barrios better? Barry, okay. I don't know. Barrios isn't as ta- talented. He's not as fast. He's not as talented. Yeah. He's probably better. I think, I think Jeff Thomas. He's probably a better route runner. But I think Thomas' overall talent has a higher ceiling. Yeah. Richards? Uh, Richards probably was, but he got hurt. He got injured. Richards was a beast. I thought he was going to be a first-round draft pick. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll tell you somebody else that I thought would, would that's not too, wasn't too bad. And that's uh, Dorsett. Yeah, Dorsett was, was pretty good. He was pretty good. Dorsett, Dorsett wasn't too bad. But that yeah, pretty- he had that one drop. We fell, we fell apart in the better Dane game, that one better Dane game, but. Yeah, but that freshman year, that freshman year, Richards, man, I thought, man, this guy's going to go. He's got two years. This guy, he's going first round draft pick. He had the size. Well, I thought the same. I thought the same thing with uh, Stacy Coley. His freshman year, uh, man, he just completely fell off the map. (laughs) I know. I know. Hmm. I know. Stacy Coley. Here's what Bashir has. Here's Bashir's uh, top four wide receivers. JT4, Coley, Richards, Berrios. I'll put Richards at number one. If we're going healthy Richards, I'm going Richards one. Yeah. Yeah, Hankerson. I mean, look what he did his freshman year. I mean, look at that Notre Dame game where he, excuse me, leaped, leaped over that one kid. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, yeah, I'm taking... Richards. Or no. How about the West Virginia game when he takes that little zero route and takes to the house? That changed the whole game. That changed the whole West Virginia game, that bowl game. Yep. Miami Hurricanes time says Pope is going to make some noise. I hope he does, man. I really hope Pope makes some noise, man. We need I would love for him to step up and be a big time player like he's supposed to be. I'm talking about that's a five star kid right there. I kind of really want to see what Wiggins can do. Who, what young receiver are you most um, excited for? Wiggins. I really want to see what Wiggins can do. I, I want to see Which, what I mean. I want to see what this Jeremiah. But, I Payton can, but then I kind of want to see what Peyton can do too. I want to see what this what Jeremiah Peyton can do, man. Yeah. Birdman says Hightower will be a monster. I hope you're right, Birdman. Uh, North, North Fresh says Pope and Hightower. Bashir says Ezard and Pope. James for life, Hightower. Kane 77, Peyton. A lot of Peyton, man. I, I'm excited to see Peyton. I want to see what this guy can do. Maybe it's because we haven't seen him yet. Pope for me, but this new guy. What do you think about – What are your, what's your opinion on Wiggins? Besides he's – being consistent in catching the football. I think you just got to – I think it's just a confidence. I think it's just a – in my opinion, I think it's just a confidence factor. That's what I think. I think you get confident, get more confidence. You know, I think he'll be a beast. Uh, we got a lot of good receivers, too. Man, especially with Thomas coming back and the Osborne kid coming in. Yo, this – this receiving core is looking legit. Legit. Uh-huh. 
I'm excited. Yeah, I forgot about Osborne. Yeah. That's another one. Now, I want to see what he had. He can put up the same numbers that he put up in a match. I think he can. Cause I think he can. We think he'll be in the slot. I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. Because who's put, who you put on the outside? But I was going to put Thomas in the slot. Yeah, that's true. What's the word on TJ Jones? I don't know what the word on TJ Jones is, but I'll tell you this. He won't answer my text no more. That's usually a bad sign. Stop that. I don't even want to hear that. We know what happened the last time. I told you Penn State was with five hours the other day. Five hours there with this guy. And now the guy we had recruiting him, right. Cooney, Cooney's gone. So someone's got it. Man, we're getting out. So now you got to build another He already had a relationship with Dugan. Now I'm sure Cooney was probably the dude talking to him now. So now you're going to put a third guy on him? Man, it's not looking good for him, man. Yeah, Penn State has been active. They get Dunmore and, and T.J. Jones. They take those two out of Florida, those two receivers. Man, that, they, they came and got some big-time players. What I, don't, what I don't understand is, is why these Florida kids want to go up there to Penn State in that day in cold weather and that snow. I guess, I guess, I don't know, you walk out on a game day and you got a hundred and some thousand people all wearing white. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, but they pretty only cool. do that once a game. And it's normally when a big game, like when Ohio, Ohio State. State, Ohio State or Michigan come in. Maybe Michigan State depends on how good they are. The only time they ever do it. I know. But I mean, they do pack the place. That's one thing I will say about Penn State. It don't have to be a big time game. But yeah, still, know. you know, there it's freaking 30, 29 degrees outside and all when you're not used to it. I know. Uncle Joe says, is Miami recruiting T.J. Jones, Bo? Uncle Joe, I do not know. Like I said, I've texted him, and he usually texts back. But the last few days, he has not responded to me. I even asked him, I said, hey, are you taking an official visit? No answer. So I'm in the same boat you are. I don't know if they're recruiting him or not. I, I guess know. we'll find out. I guess we'll find out in February. I know. Where where Cooney go? I don't know. Right now I'm hearing uh, Oregon, Florida State, Louisville, and Auburn have all reached out to him. And I heard that Miami, if you tune in late, that Miami, the reason he's upset is because Miami didn't even give him an interview. And that's why he's so upset. It's not that he did not get the job. He did not get an interview. Is what I heard. Boy, they offer. Wonder who? Large. What I like that who got know. which per, which coach talked to Thomas and got him to stay. Cooney. I mean, I wonder. Wonder what's going through Jeff Thomas's head now if he leaves. No, he's he's locked in. He ain't going nowhere now. You got Eno's probably talking. No, to I mean him. if Cooney leave, if Cooney's leaving, I wonder what Jeff Thomas is thinking there. Uh, probably, it's probably good. He's locked in. They got everything set. They got the new offensive coordinator. I'm, 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 he ain't going nowhere. Let's see what it says here. Bo, are they offering Cooney the wide receiver job at other schools? I don't know. I didn't ask that question. But I can, I'm going to try to find out for y'all. I don't know. Even if it was same position, I think he's mad because they didn't even interview him and they promised to interview him. So I think he feels disrespected. Even if he gets... Uh, takes the same position somewhere else. It's the fact that they didn't even interview him. That's the thing. You gotta interview him. I'm well, sorry. I mean, how, how would you He's feel? You said. How would you feel? How would you feel? You're doing all this work. You know that there's no no offensive staff in place, and they hire they hire an OC, a running back coach, and an offensive line coach. You're still out there recruiting because they're behind. They just got hired. And they're telling, okay, we're going to interview you for one of these two jobs. And you don't even get the interview? Man, you're going to be like, man, fuck this. Take me to Oregon. Take me to Florida State. Take me to Louisville. Give me the same job. Uh, to go out there, I'll recruit my ass off, bring Florida kids there. And I'm, I'm going to get a raise eventually. I mean, he might go to Louisville. I don't blame him. I mean, I would be. And Louisville takes, I mean, they do have a base in Florida. I mean, they had Bridgewater. I mean, different staff, of course, but I mean, they 
it's not some Florida kids on that on that well, team. I don't know if you've been. I mean, if you've been watching on Twitter, Oregon has been recruiting South. I mean, throwing out um, offers down in South Florida like crazy today and yesterday. So, and that, and there you go, uh, Crystal Ball. You know, but yeah. Louisville, their their head recruiting job is open now because now Field came to Miami, so now their job is wide open to be the head recruiter. He goes goes out there to Louisville for a year as the head recruiting in the recruiting room, brings them in talent. I'm sure someone's going to give him. Maybe Louisville bumps him up, or Kentucky, or somebody finds him and gives him a job next year. I, I'm not mad about him being mad and leaving. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, I'm not either. You can't. I mean, you, I do the same thing. Especially if I had a job and was busting my ass to, in everything because of shorthanded and didn't have this, and didn't have that, and they turn around, by the way, oh, we got this guy, this, net, net. Goodbye. I'll find somewhere else. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you there. But I will say this, Stephen Field, this guy can recruit, man. This guy is a recruiter. I mean, he coached at Miami before when uh, Shannon was here as, as a GA, was a uh, coach at Northwestern, the head coach. He was the offensive coordinator over at uh, Bell Glade. I think he won it with with Travis Benjamin and them, won a, won a state championship. Uh, was coaching up here at North Marion. He had a talented team there. I mean, he put all kinds of people D1. He had he had Ocala shook, man. They were scared. This guy came up here and didn't know nothing and was taking all the kids from everybody. He had these people shook. This guy can recruit. Our tight end coach is going to be a guy that keeps us in it. This dude is going to recruit his ass off. Yes, he is. He is going to recruit like none other. I mean, look at his track record for record at recruiting. After watching Oregon's bowl game, was not impressed with Crystal Ball. Uh, I think people are more about Crystal Ball for his recruiting than his, I would say, game day management, if you had to ask me. Field, a.k.a. White Chocolate. I don't know if Field's White Chocolate. Field can turn it on. He can act He can act White Chocolate one minute, and he gets around the, right, um, the white crowd. He's going to act... Uh, He's gonna he can he can turn that that side on too. Tight end you, that's easy. Can't wait to see the stunt field pulls first. It's gonna be a big one. I hope so. I hope it's a big one. Man, let me see what. Hey, what do you think our corners look like next year? Uh, I don't. I mean, probably Ben. You think Al Blaze will be a? You think Al Blaze Jr. will be a starter? Or you think they'll still keep him in the nickel? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm going to find that out in spring. I think spring football will find out a lot. You think he's better than Ivy? I don't know. See, we're not going to find I, out. I, 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 I mean, I kind of was hoping Al Blaze to come in. And, I mean, but didn't really do a whole lot. I mean, he played the nickel, played on special teams. Mm-hmm. Is Field better than Hartley? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're definitely going to find out. This is going to be Field's first time as a position coach in the big time D1. So we're going to find out. We are going to find out. Let's hope he is. Let's hope Field is just as good or better as Hartley. Yeah, I agree. Let's hope. Where is Boykin going to land? His tape is seven. Man, I think Boykin's – Boykin, I, I'm thinking he's going to be a hurricane. That's what I think. Eno's going after Lance. Look, yeah, from Louisiana. Yeah, we're gonna see how that is. Now, now Plumley's not coming. I can't believe that man. I, I wanted that Plumley kid. What do you think about that, Tommy? What, Jack? Uh, Plumley. They're not coming on his visit. He's not coming on his visit now. I might have backed off of him. Mm. I don't understand that. I mean, obviously, he has been much have faith in what we have here then. In, uh, with uh, Tate and Perry and Williams hmm. for the future. I'd like to see what's going on with Tate if he gets to where he's eligible next week or next this coming season, like he's trying to get. I'm, I'm going on record. Perry's going to start. 
I'm going with Perry. I think Perry's I was going. I was actually thinking Perry or Williams. I didn't know. I was gonna wait and see how the spring with the spring came out. I'm at my early prediction, I'm going right now, I'm going Perry. People are gonna say I'm crazy, but I'm going Perry, man. Yeah, I'll probably go there too because like we said, Williams couldn't get on the field at all. Mm-hmm. Over Perry, you know, with Perry getting in trouble. So I mean Who knows? I know. I don't know either, man. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna this job is gonna be wide open. Miami's after condo says hell no, nah, bro. I'm telling you, I'm going with Perry. Y'all keep sleeping on Perry. I mean, the one thing is they're all coming in together and learning the same offense. It's not like one's been there longer than the other. It's a brand new offense for everybody. Man. Let's see. North Fresh says Kane's insider says he is confident Tate Martell will be ready to play immediately. I hope he's I'm hoping he's right. He, I mean, he did get a lawyer. Did, by what, the one article I read, he's getting a lawyer to fight the NCAA for uh yeah, to be eligible. Change. Yeah, and he and he's got the money, so, so I'm sure they'll have a top law, lawyer. Probably probably get the same law, lawyer that lawyer that um the Michigan, the Michigan quarterback had last year. What's his name from Ole Miss? You know, oh, Mich- um, Mich- Michigan's quarterback. He, he got a lawyer. Yeah. That's how he beat it. I think Tate can pick up the offense faster than Perry. It's B. Hester. We're gonna find out if Perry stays out of trouble. Berman. If Perry's out of trouble, he will start. Tate has a very weak arm. Or is not a pocket passer. They'll play zone, load the box, and make it difficult for him. I, I agree, Berman. I think I think uh, I think Perry could be the guy. It's it's not hard for him to stay out of trouble. All he's got to do is stop recording, stop going live. That's all he's got to stop doing. He stops doing that, he'll be good. That's so it. far, he's not done anything dumb he needs or to, posted anything he dumb. Needs to just I mean, start. he has done. Videos and all, but most of the videos that he's been posted on Instagram are people dancing, the like players and stuff dancing in the locker room. Yeah, he needs to start like posting so, over there and take pictures with kids and post that. You know, he, he needs to do those kind of things. Well, he did put that one post out him throwing that ball to that one kid. That kid was running that nine route deep and he threw it to him. Mm. But there ain't been nothing else there, nothing else. All right, Tommy. Yeah. What's up, D- Damon? You know, maybe, maybe, you know, if you want to get that back, maybe you should just not post nothing at all and delete the account so he, he goes to the NFL. <laughs> hmm. That's yeah. what I would do. I'd say, you know what, man? I'm not even between nothing. Yeah. Shea Patterson, that's it. Yeah, that's what I would say, too. I'm I mean, what- I know I know he deleted his Facebook accounts, as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, his Twitter's there. Mm. He's Twitter's got Twitter there. and Instagram. Yes. Man, I'm waiting on Adrian McPherson to call in about his Air 5 7-on-17. This guy might be the greatest athlete ever in the state of Florida. Mm. McPherson? Yes. Mr. Football, I mean, we'll tell the hmm? we'll tell the audience if, if if those that don't know, tell them about him. Tell, tell, tell he's, a about him. he's a Seminole. He's a Seminole, but he's he's running a good. He's got a good seven on seven program called Air Five. Uh, he started a few years ago, man. It's getting bigger. He started with the little kids, and now it's getting bigger and bigger. And he's got some. As a matter of fact, he's got Kenny Kelly's son as one of his quarterbacks. I think both his sons are his quarterbacks. We have had uh, we've had as for the Kaya. Kaya Kelly, we've had him on before, the one from Tampa. Mm-hmm. I know we had him on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to be uh, scary now, this kid. The players don't catch the ball like the old days. No strings on the pass. More practice, practice, practice. FSU falling apart at the seams. That's what it seems like, folks. A lot of transferring mm-hmm. out. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's Vicious Vic. It's Vicious Vic. It's only Vic. Manny Diaz was up in the Big Apple today making his rounds and his connection. Oh, did he come, oh. Top, did he come see Vicious top, Vic? 
with the number one high school coach in New York City, and the reigning back-to-back champion. And uh, we got a new offer on the table from that got? school. Oh, hello. Now, uh, hello. Who we got, Vic? <laughs> um, I posted it. Hey, what's happening? I posted it. Hey, well, say it. Vic, did you see the? Say it. Vic, did you see the new? Uh, you see the new picture on on the YouTube? No. Um, we switched the screen. Like, um, if you get a chance, go ahead and uh, see the screen. I gotta probably uh, re- uh redo one of the pictures, but it got you in there. I put you. You're in there. there. You're, you're you're there holding a pool stick. Hmm. <laughs> So go ahead and uh, okay. go ahead and uh, no, check that out. If if you do decide no. to look at it, go on YouTube. Listen to me, Dick. If you decide to go look on it, make sure you mute your sound, either your phone, so we don't get that feedback. If you see, because you have to press play to see the picture. Hey, Vic. Do me a favor. D- DM it to me. I want to see what it looks like. Hey, Vic. So what, what's, the, uh, what's the big? What's thought, Damien? Vic, what's the big uh, offer? Let's let, let, let the people know. Um. I'm still doing my homework on this kid. He's a uh, he's like six four. He's a wide receiver, defensive player. His name is Jay Z and Harris. J A H Z I O N Harris. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he just got an offer today from uh, Manny Diaz. Um, he's the end wide receiver, six four, one ninety four. Uh, 2021. He's got offers already from. Hmm. Let's see. I know Ohio State, Tennessee, Michigan, Rutgers, Syracuse. Uh, this guy must be a stud. Uh, if he's already getting offers from Ohio State, Tennessee, Syracuse, and Michigan. So, uh, J A H Z I O N Harris. I really don't know much about him. But I know the coach, uh, Danny Lambert, actually, he used to work with my ex-wife uh, many years ago when they taught together in middle school. He's a phenomenal coach. Um, le- he's going to be a legend. You know, he's in his early, you know, late 40s, maybe 50s. He's a phenomenal coach. And uh, he's, uh, he had a link with Ohio State, you know. He sent Curtis Samuel to him and a couple of other players. So, you know, maybe he could have that new connection with Diaz. I see that they follow each other now on um, Twitter. You should follow him. Danny Landberg, L-A-N-D-B-E-R-G. Hey, well, Lamb- I just sent it to you. I just sent it to you, Vic. Yeah, North Fresh okay. saying the kid runs a 4 8 Just make sure you put your phone on mute if you decide to look at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. No, 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 I'm not gonna. Hold on. Okay. I'll, I'll, wait. There's only one kid in New York I want. That's that Tyree kid, man. That's it, Tyree kid. Well, you just be. Well, Tommy, are you gonna? Tommy, you gonna talk a little basketball towards the end of the show? Yeah, if you want to. The Lady Kings no. are up up five four at Duke right now. They just going to the half. Mm. Okay. Well, hey, Tommy. I'm sorry if I interrupt. Hey. I I'll be back, guys. I got the lady on the other hand, and it's not Manuela. Oh, okay. No shit. Get out of here. Oh, oh god. god, here we go. What an idiot. Vic. The love. <laughs> you go call me. I'm not there. You gotta love me. So you have to me that picture because I didn't see it. I went. I haven't seen. It. I've heard all this. Talk, but I haven't seen the picture. So you gotta send it to me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna message you on, um, on the messenger now. If you look at it now, just make sure your phone's on mute because it'll go to the live feed. All right. All right, go. We need to recruit like Bama. We need two twenty, two hundred twenty pounds, six foot two backs. I still want Boykin. I think we're gonna get Boykin. He's visiting this weekend. See, I'm fine. I'm fine with our running back. Personally, you I, I, we got, I think we're stacked at running back. To be honest with you, I mean I'm trying. I mean with DJ and Lingard and Burt and uh, Davis and I mean I'm happy with the running backs. So my running backs are loaded. James for life says, man, 
I gotta say, man, today I was excited. I was pumped up today. Seeing the staff finally called. Now we gotta finish off this recruiting class strong. Can we do that? That would get a big way. Do you think we can finish this thing off strong, the recruiting class? Maybe. I hope. Yeah. I, I hope. I don't think. Yeah, Tommy, I sent you Tommy. We... All right, I got it. I'll look at it here in a little bit. I just feel uh, like the, the, they've already got the guys they want to get. I think they're starting to focus their edge on that 2020 class, in my opinion. Add Richards and we're stacked at running back. Is Richards really a running back? I think he's more of like a Percy Harvin, a running back, wide receiver. And I don't see him coming here. I think Dan Mullins is selling him on being a Percy Harvin, to be honest with you. He probably is. Yep. I mean, I like to get some kids flipped. I'm hoping we can flip some, flip some linemen. That's what we need is a damn lineman, some D tackles. Because that's what I really want. I mean, I'm happy at running back. With Jeff Thomas coming in now, wide receiver, I'm happy with what we've got at wide receiver. I'd want some linemen and maybe another pass rusher. Because who do we really got to take place of what uh, Joe Jackson did besides Garvin? Yeah, we got some guys. I think we're good. We might get Bogle. But we know we need some D tackles, man. We got we need some depth at D yeah. tackle. We need to stop the run. That's what I'm worried about. Two four seven Kane says we need a bag man to get Evan Neal back. James for life finally. Biggie videos. The Canes will be back when we put a beating on Lawrence. <laughs> the UCLA but is guy. It Neil, is it Neil signed already though? Yeah. Hey, the UC he signed or he signed early. That's right. The UCLA guy, the um, African dude from UCLA. He's coming to visit, I think it's this weekend. Um, don't know if I'm 100% yeah. off the top of my head. I don't know if I'm correct. He can I come in. Yeah, how to pronounce his name. Yeah, I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't. I didn't even try to say it. Didn't even try. Man, yes, two visits. See? What else do we need? Oh, oh. Adrian, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. First seminal we ever had on this show, I gotta say. Uh, so now your show is just where it needs to be, man. <laughs> hey, but I, I, I gotta ask you, man, what what's it like building this franchise or this program you built, the Air Five? Um, it's been it's been amazing, man. Like uh I mean I think kinda you know, when I first started this deal, it, it, it kind of just became a thing where I just wanted to help, you know, kids kind of get recruited and have the, have a platform to to compete at a high level on the 707 circuit um, against teams from all over the country. That was kind of the initial um, start of the program. But, you know, as I've done it for a couple of years, I, I've just seen so many um different ways I can help these, these kids. And, and it's kind of grown into this. I mean, we obviously do the the football side of things, but now we have SAT, ACT prep tutors that come in. We have yoga instructors that come in. We have food etiquette uh, classes for our kids. We have tutors that come in every day. Our kids do cryotherapy. Um, so it's just kind of grown to this whole holistic approach to making sure that these kids have everything that they possibly need um, to just make them successful at life, you know. So I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of just preparing them for, you know, what we feel like are, are some of the important things that they'll they'll see throughout the course of their young lives and, and they're, they're able to make um, educated decisions um, based on those those things that, that they'll see. Um, so it's – I'm more proud of the things that we're doing away from the game of football um, than the things we're doing – in football because they're just talented kids so you know they'll be good football players regardless but when you can take those kids and um kind of show them some other things to to help them become great young men um that's what's kind of that's what i'm most proud of hey you no know, doing all the stuff that you, you do do you have any problems with the high school coaches 
thinking maybe they spend more time with you than them? Um, I, I did initially, you know, uh, but the thing about my, my program is I start from eight years old all the way up through high school. Um, with with that in mind, you know, a lot of high school coaches, and, and rightfully so, you know, I think they they see some 707 programs and, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion or whatever they think 707 is. Um, but, you know, what I had to do is sit down with high school coaches and let them know that, hey, first of all, you know, I was one of these kids, you know, and, and, and this is my way of giving back, you know. Um, the game of football has, has blessed me and I've been able to see a bunch of different things. Um, some things that, you know, a high school coach can't prepare a kid from for because they haven't seen some of the things that the kids could possibly see. Um, so, you know, I just, you know, try to tell them, look, I, I'm not here to step on your toes. I'm actually here to help you help these, this kid. The kid will never miss a, a, a high school function. Um, he'll never, I mean, he'll never miss a, a workout. Um, but never miss a team um, function. Um, but at the same time, you know, if a kid wants to work outside of the the high school organization to just simply get better, you know, maybe uh, I'm able to connect with him in some ways that you just aren't able to connect with him. Um, that have that have nothing to do with football. You know, why why should we um, kind of take that away from kids? And, and so once I kind of sat down with high school coaches and and, and told them my vision and what I'm trying to do for these kids. They they were a little better about it, you know, and, and I just had to tell them, look, I've, I've turned down college jobs. I had the opportunity to go work for pro organizations. Um, obviously, I've had high school job opportunities that I've turned down because that's not what I want to do. I want to help develop young men um, that come from my community because I wish I had somebody to do the things for me that I'm trying to do for these young men. Do these kids know how good you are? I mean, you're arguably one of the, the greatest athletes <laughs> ever in state of Florida. You know, they don't. I don't talk about it. Um, you know, and I, I tell kids all the time. I mean, last year I went and played in Jacksonville for a little bit, and it was it was it was only to to show the kids that I can play. Um, so I played a couple games there, did really well, but my heart was with the kids. So I had to let the team know that hey, I'm going to go back and and work with these kids. But, you know, in that moment, that's kind of when they realized, you know, hey, coach, you're really good. And I was like, you know, yeah, I can play the game of football, uh, but it's more important for me to be out here with you guys. Uh, so it's just one of those things that I guess I probably should talk about a little bit more with them. Uh, but I'm not a I'm not a me guy. You know, I've never been one to kind of just brag on what I did and what I'm doing. I just kind of let it speak for itself. Um, but to answer your question, no, they don't they don't have a clue. What, what I've done, what I've accomplished. They don't know that you're Mr. Football and Mr. <laughs> Basketball? They don't know. They they have no – they have no clue. I've had kids that have come up to me and say, Coach, I didn't even know you played quarterback. You know, and I, and I tell them, you know, look, I think, you know, it was just a teaching tool. Hey, if, 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 you're, if you're learning anything from somebody, you should probably find out who you're learning from. Look them up. You know, learn as much as you can about that person because you never know what you can learn from that person if you don't know who you're dealing with. So um, some of them know now, uh, but I, I just I just kind of try to use it as a teaching tool to tell them that, you know, you always want to know who you're dealing with. You always want to know, you know, what they've done, what they're about, um, and just making sure you're aligning yourself with the right people. Hey, uh, you know when I first met you, you had you had a lot of uh, what fifteen U team and younger teams. Yeah. And now you yeah. got the high school. Now you're developing the whole way up. Uh, are, are you? Are you all these guys? How much better are these guys getting going through your program out there in high school? Oh, uh, there's 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 a couple that are that are special, you know. Um, but that was always in them, you know. I mean, I mean, as you know, when you're a football guy, you can see. I tell parents all the time, look, I, if there's a receiver that's special, he doesn't need to run 100 routes. He can run two or three routes, and I know that he has it, you know. Um, but those are the guys you don't – I don't really take credit for. They're just talented. They're, they're special kids, you know, and you, you kind of hone in on the fundamentals with them and you kind of try to keep their, their head straight. 
um, and focused on the on the main goal. But you know, there's some kids that have kind of come through, and they're still young um, now. Um, but to see, I mean, I have a, a kid that's in the seventh grade now, and he came about two years ago, and I can remember this kid, you know, coming out of practice, throwing the ball, and, and coaches being like, "Okay, why are you keeping this kid?" Um, but what they didn't know is, you know, what I saw in him was he was just a kid that worked his butt off. Every single day he was going to work. And I knew if he was willing to put in the time, I can get the maximum out of him. You know, and I didn't know what that was going to be, but I knew every time he stepped on the field, he was going to give me everything he had. And then you fast forward two years, he's a seventh grader. And, you know, even last year, every tournament we went to, you would see high school guys watching this kid throw because he was probably more fundamentally sound than most high school quarterbacks. So it's those stories that I like to watch and brag about because it was like, you know, this kid had never played football before he came out here. And so I'm interested to kind of watch his journey, you know, and kind of see, you know, where he ends up because he's just a hardworking kid who came out and had never played. Um, but even, you know, you, you have kids, I mean, like, you know, when I started that 15U team a couple of years ago, the one that you, you saw, and, you know, just looking at this year where I think there were seven kids on that team that have now signed D1 scholarships. So that's always, you know, something to, to feel good about because, you know, they didn't know at that time what they could be. You know, to, so to see those kids sign those scholarships is, is special. What's the expectations this year for the Air Five? Um. You know, for me, it's always, you know, to, to I, tell, I tell, you know, parents, I tell kids, our, our, our program is going to be built on um, love, family, and respect. That's, that's just what, what I teach. You know, every day I tell my kids I love them. They look at me crazy, or they did at first, you know, and, and now it's, Coach, I love you, you know, because you just never know what kids are, are going through. So, so the expectations for me out of my kids is just, to give me everything you got every single day, you know, in the classroom, I expect you to go to school and have at least a 2.5 GPA. You know, I expect that, you know, that that's, that's bare minimum. You can't play here if you don't have that, because if you don't have that, you can't go to college and play. Period. You know, so I try to hold them at a, a higher expectation. I, so I expect them to take care of the books. I expect them to always be respectable you know, to, to everyone, you know, and it's not just me or the parents, it, it, it's everyone. You know, I expect them to be respectable, uh, respectful. Um, I expect them to come out here and give me everything they got every single day. You know, there'll be days where, you know, their bodies are sore because we, we go three days a week. So, you know, if you're out here and you're 75%, I need 100% of that 75. You know, so just give me everything you got every day. And if we do that, we put ourselves in, in – in a great situation to be successful. And, you know, I tell my kids all the time, look, this game isn't about winning and losing. It's about, you know, learning from the game, um, learning life lessons from this game and applying them to our life. You know, so there, there's just teams that we'll face that are just, they're better at that time, you know, and that's okay. You know, so I never set an expectation to win a national championship or anything like that because, you know, who cares if we're 12 and we win the national championship um, and they're not developing when they're 16, 17 year old, years old. Um, so so to win the national championship was never the goal. It, it's just to make sure every kid in my in my program goes to college, whether that's academically or, or athletically. You know, so um, those, those are my – only me. Just work, you know, just work hard. Um, be respectful and give me everything you got. Hey, Adrian, I got to ask you a question off topic. I had a guy tell me. Okay. You played in the All Star game in California, correct? With Sean Taylor? Correct. Correct. Is it true that you were taking all their money in basketball? Is this true story? That is, that is, that is absolutely true. <laughs> this guy, well, B- Billy, was telling me that you were whooping them. Like, they, they kept talking yeah, trash that, to you. But, but that's their fault, man. Like, they're, they were football players. I was a basketball player playing football. So it was just this, like, yeah, it was a challenge at the court. And, you know, I felt like, you know, there comes a point in time where you have to teach people a lesson. 
and that was just the day that they needed to understand that they weren't better basketball players than me. Who was you know, that? So that is true. Who was all out there? Was it Sean Taylor? Oh, um, it, it was Sean. It was Chris Gamble. Chris Gamble actually he was a really good basketball player. Um, Cafargo Thorpe was out there. Um, who else was out there? Um, I want to say like Jamal Fudge. Uh, there's probably 10 of us out there. Um, but it, it was a great time. It, it was a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, they gave me some money to spend while I was in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that story. I was like, man, there's no way. Man. I'm like, why would they even want to play him? He just got Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball. Well, apparently they, they, they didn't pay attention to that. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. Hey, how, how do you help these guys in recruiting? Because you've been through this process. Yeah, what, what I try to do um, is is when a kid comes to the program and, and they're getting, you know, recruited by whoever they get recruited by, I just try to give them a list of questions to ask because I'm not really involved in that part of it. I don't, I don't really – I'm more of a I'll sit in the background kind of guy. I don't want to be involved. I guess I do now, um, but – um, I just give them a list of questions to ask. Hey, who else are you recruiting? Where am I on your board? Um, how many of us are you bringing in? Those type things. And that way the kid can kind of know, he can make an educated decision when choosing where he's going to college, you know. Um, because if you're, you're taking three guys and you were 10 on their board, but they already got, two and four, well, that just kind of tells you where you're coming in when you get there. You know, so I just, you know, I kind of give them as much information as I possibly can um, and, and just so they can make an educated decision. Uh, you, so, I mean, you've been recruited, you committed to Florida State and all that. You know, a lot of these, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of these fans are like, they don't understand the businesses, but they're like, you, com- right. you commit to the school. And I'm like, no, they don't commit to the school, they commit to the coach. Do you agree they commit Absolutely. to the coach? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they, you know, the school doesn't recruit them. The coaches recruit them. Um, I, I just kind of think there's a lot of, um, people on the outside just don't, they don't really understand the way that it works. Um, so a lot of their opinion is based on really whatever they come up with, because, you know, you, you, you don't know what a kid is being told to get them there. You don't know the relationship that um, a kid had with a coach throughout the recruiting process. I can remember even from a basketball standpoint, um, I wanted to go to North Carolina, and Bill Guthridge was the coach at the time. And he recruited me the whole way through, and I was committed to Carolina for basketball. And then they hired Matt Doherty. I didn't know. I didn't. We had no relationship, you know. Um, so for me, there was no way I was going there because I didn't. I didn't know his philosophy. I didn't know. I didn't know anything, you know. Um, and that's what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, when you you build those relationships with these coaches because you know essentially this is, you know, father figures away from home, and then those coaches are no longer there and you bring in someone that may have just a completely different mindset with everything, and maybe you don't connect with that person, um, I think those kids should have the opportunity to um, find some way that fit for them if that happens because these are very important years in these kids' lives. And um, I just don't think people that don't really know how it works, I don't think they, they understand it. And, and do the – I mean, I saw this season you took kids to Florida State games, Miami games. You took Absolutely. all over. Do the Florida State fans – do they do, do they try to say you should push them to Florida State? I've never – no one's ever said that to me. I, I wouldn't do it. Like, I'm not – you know, I mean, this year we're going to Seattle. You know, I think – I try to take my kids all over the country because I feel like you never know what – um, what 
a different situation. Like, you know, if I if there may be a kid that wants to live in California and just doesn't know they want to live in California. But if they never see it, they never know it. So I try to take them to different parts of the country so they know, they at least know, nah, I don't want to go here, but it's because I don't want to go here. I've seen it. It doesn't feel right for me. I'm going to stay here, right? But if they don't know, they don't know. So that's a lot of the reason I try to take kids to just different regions, to expose them to different things, um, and, and, and hopefully, you know, um, they feel good about what we're trying to do, you know. But I've never had someone, you know, say, hey, send them to Florida State because, you know, for me, everybody can't play at Florida State. You know, so so it's, it goes back to finding the situation that's best for each individual kid, um, and then giving them the, the 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 important information that they need to make an educated decision. Hmm. What made you pick Florida State? My mom, man, she she was she was in love with Coach Bowden. Um, really? I was. Yeah, I was actually. I was. To be honest with you, I was actually going Carolina. Um, and then, you know, what kind of – there were two things that kind of – well, the biggest thing that kind of swayed the decision was Coach Doherty. I just didn't know enough about him. But I was going to Carolina because I was a basketball and a football player. And at Carolina, at the time, you had Julius Peppers and Ronald Curry, who were playing both. Yeah. And they were doing a good job playing both. So I knew it could be done. Like, I knew Carolina was all for allowing guys that can play both sports play both sports. Whereas with Florida State, you know, other than Charlie Ward, I had never really seen it. Yeah, Bobby Sir, uh, Charlie Ward was it. Charlie Bobby Sir, yeah. But I had never really seen it. It was, it, was, it was so long ago that I had never really seen it. I had heard about it but I didn't see it. But as I was being recruited, they were doing it. You know, I mean, here was Ronald Curry with the starting basketball, um, and the starting uh, quarterback, and the starting point guard on the basketball team. You know, so I knew it could be done. Um, and then, you know, she's my mom. Like, she loved Florida State. And then when, you know, we we're a very close family. And then when we started talking about how I was so used to my parents being at every single game ever. And when I started to think about playing and then never really being able to be there, that was a big deciding factor for me because I knew if I was at Florida State, they would be at every game. Um, so, yeah, that's, my mom pretty much made that decision for me. <laughs> that's what's up. Well, hey, hey man, uh, are, you, are you going to pylon in a couple weeks? We will not be there. We got a, a little bit of a late start this year. So I think our first tournament is February 2nd down in Miami. Um so yeah, we'll be there. We'll be in Miami February second, and then we're going to Myrtle Beach at the end of the Feb uh, February twenty fourth or third or somewhere in there. Um, so we won't play in Pylon, but we'll we'll come out there and just kind of take a look at things. All right, hey, but man, uh, thanks for giving us your time, man, and uh, thanks for calling. And, uh, I can't wait to see you again. No problem. No problem, man. Take care. Thanks for having me. Yep. There he is. I think the greatest athlete from the state of Florida, Adrian McPherson. Vic! What's up, buddy? That was the greatest athlete in the state of Florida right there. Adrian McPherson? Yeah, you got Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball in the same year. He runs the 7-on-7 seven -seven program. He came on here to talk about this. He went to Florida State. He got into a little bit of trouble, too. I should ask him about that, but... Yeah, and... Uh, I was actually waiting. I was actually waiting for you to ask him that. He's a good dude, man. I met him uh, several times. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's still I up. actually remember him playing. He was a beast, man. This guy, you got to think, he was playing football, got missing football, turns around basketball season, averaging like, what, 25 or 26 a game? He's a beast. He was a beast. But we got a comment section. Bogle will be a cane. What do you think? Vicious Dick, you think Bolt was going to be a cane? Um, well, 
going by from what Adrian was saying about, you know, where he stands on the depth chart, it looks like he's, you know, at the bottom of it. And, you know, they're telling him to take, what, a blue shirt? Gray shirt. Or a red or shirt? One of the red shirt, gray I shirt, black shirt. I would imagine he'd want to come in and, you know, be a big fish, you know, in a small pond. They're, you know, real. let's be real. We don't have the depth that Alabama has. A defensive end. I mean, he could probably come in and start, you know, or at least get some playing time and, you know, and get his feet wet. And by the time he's a sophomore, you know, who knows? Maybe he could, you know, relish uh, and be the next coming of a Jonathan Garvin or maybe even better. So uh, I'd love to see him here. But um, he's already made his commitment, but he hasn't signed his letter of intent. So, um I don't know. I'd love to have him. What about you, Tommy? And he was he was on the fix. I watched that live commitment, live, on that Army game. And they came back, and the guy said, the guy that was doing the interviews, that was doing the talking to the kids, he came on and he said, this was a last-minute pick. And he says he's still not 100% sure if that's what he wants to do. Hmm. So I mean, who knows? I I hope we can flip him. How about Tennessee though? They said some people said Tennessee was second, and we were third. Yeah, but you know, man, I ain't count, ever counting out Diaz anymore. This man, shoot. <laughs> yeah, the the mafia, the mafia is in Miami. Man, we need to get him. I mean, I know some fans are like, no, I don't want to get him, let him go. But, man, right now, we got to take this guy right now. We need, like you said right before the interview, we need deep tackles. Yeah, we do. Damien. Bo. What's up? Check your inbox. Check your inbox and read the screenshot out loud. What's They're talking one? about us. Which look, one? Listen, listen, read it, read it. That's the most funny Which shit. One? The last, the last thing I just sent you. I got it right here. How the hell they went from those cane shades YouTube videos with that chin strap slobbering all over himself to a reasonably respected UN media source is beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they're having a field day in there. That's not the only comment. They're going crazy. Where they're did, going buku crazy in there. Where did you find this at? <laughs> Kane's Insight? Yeah, in Kane's Insight. Oh they, man! They, they did a threat on us. Really? What is? Yeah. Oh, I'm, hey, about to, I'm about to. Open you know it. you take the I. You know you take the I off of C S. You know it's C I S, right? Yeah. You take that I out, it's C S. Then it's the cane shape. <laughs> There's no I in C S. They should have took us off the front of their fucking oh. webpage back then. Shit! They thought they, you know what they did. <laughs> they thought we were getting too big. The funny. They, t- they thought we were getting too big and took us off that damn front of that web page. Now look. Not only that, no, 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 that's not the thing. The, the, the truth is, what's that word? Um, exploit, like in the like exploiters. You, you ever see the movie Wayne's World? Mm-hmm. Uh, where, yeah, where, yeah, where the, yeah. The guy Benjamin comes. Yeah, where Benjamin talks to to Wayne and Garth, and they're trying to take over the show. That's exactly what happened to me and Bo. But Benjamin was the other guy I don't want to mention. I don't. I don't the see this thread, man. Management. I don't see this thread anywhere. Where did you see this Kane Shades thread? Uh, the, t- go ahead and type in Kane Shades in the in the in the Kane's insight thing. It'll pop up. Huh. Let me see. But wasn't then that wasn't it like a year ago when that when a uh, certain person from Kane's insight put out a tweet? Rest in peace. Yeah, almost. Yes, there. it's a year from this day, and you don't understand, man. Uh, you don't understand that tweet there had almost half the or half the people on Twitter turn on us. Like, like they were like, "Yo, now a lot of people that were hating on us that day is riding with us now." But uh, what a difference a year makes. Really, I believe we have a phone call. Can not change radio? What it do, babe? What's going on? What it do? What it do? Hey, man, I'm over here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but I'm born and raised in Dade County, man. All right, welcome aboard. I'm a Dade fan, and I want to expand the base, man. 
Okay, where where in Dade you from? Yeah, man, um, I'm in Baton Rouge right here by Jazz Valley and LSU, and I think we can expand the where base, man. Where? I like the business. Okay, okay, where in Dade you from? Where in Miami I was born, you from? Uh, I was born at Jackson Memorial. I'm from over there by 32nd Avenue by Miami Dade Community College. I went to, I graduated at Miami Central High. Oh, that's what's up. Okay, I'm down south. I'm a homestead. So we got to ask you, You're man. Homestead. We got to ask you. Yeah, yeah. How you feeling about the the, the current situation right now? State of the program. Man, I'm I'm excited about it, man. I'm really excited about it, man. We 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 really need to hire somebody else from down there, man. And uh, understand our swag and everything. And I'm watching you live on the TV in Baton Rouge, but it's some real haters, man. Oh, we've always had haters, man. Man, I seen uh, oh, I was watching the Paul Feinbaum show. Oh my God, you should have seen what they were talking about. Our quarterback coach, they just literally lost at least at least six coordinators, man. And uh, Paul Feinbaum mm-hmm. and his little so-called SEC network, they were hating on our quarterback um, coordinator now. Really? What were they saying? Well, that's because that's because they left Alabama. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you, man, the Hurricanes. You see how to say had a rain for about 30 years. Alabama and Georgia let us in 13 years. Um, it, 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 it's like a very real falling off. And I think everybody see that Miami is on his way to the top. And I believe Manny Diaz and a couple of right coordinators, I believe they're going to get us right, man. What do you think about the quarterback? What were they saying about him? Well, Paul, 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 they were just saying, why would he take the job with Miami and – and things to that nature. They just was listening with their little SEC network. And a lot of people don't understand. The SEC network has like a $500 million contract with ESPN. And so each car, each university in the network, um, the conference, they get like $40 million just for the contract with ESPN. So they have a broad base just colleges themselves, whether they make a bold or not with the contract, that would make ACC network with ESPN network is so huge because the University of Miami with the lack of funding because we're not a state school, it's a it's a private institution. With that contract with the SEC network, the ESPN, they can get money to finance and get the top notch coaches and pay them this money. So SEC, they have like Nick Saban have a hundred analysts. They got like for instance, um <clears throat> Nick Saban has analysts on his staff to where they pay these analysts to evaluate coaches themselves. Wow. Wow. I was reading that Alabama nets over $40 million in profit net after paying Saban and that staff and the analysts from all the revenue that they get from the tickets, Obviously, the SEC network, um, you know the you know the T-shirts, the hats, the jerseys, forty yeah. million dollars. That's huge, man. I mean, that's here. more than some major league baseball team. Man, look here, dude. I be I'm talking about, dude. I've been into this for a long time, researching and paying attention to detail, listening to different networks that really on the financial sector. Okay, I'm right here by LSU University, okay? It's like right in the freaking corner, man. Dude, the department, the athletic department at LSU by itself is an entity to where they gross over $60 million just on the athletic department. So they started, I don't want to digress, but I'm giving you how huge economically this can benefit with this. ATC network for the University of Miami and all of the ATC. This is how it's a it's a business. And this is how Nick Saban has these hundred staff members just where mm. analysts is not a part of the culture staff. It is a business where he has analysts to where they are paid to evaluate the best coaches, not just players. That what make him got a leg up on the game. You can do that when you got forty million dollars or better a year mm-hmm. alone coming from ESPN networks. Well, here's what I think. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Hear me out. The NCAA gets big money 
from the networks, especially in the playoffs. And they want certain teams in there because certain teams draw big TV ratings. Everyone in the South is going to watch Alabama, the Midwest, Ohio State, Clemson. If you ever noticed in the last 10 years, it's always been the same teams. And I think that they're getting these kids because I don't think, I think that they're doing something under the table. And I think the NCAA is turning a blind eye. Okay, and saying, well, who cares? We want Alabama in every year. We want Clemson in every year. We want Ohio State in every year because we make big money off of them. And it's all about the Benjamins. I don't know if you agree, but that's just me. You know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. So what do you think? I've said the it's same true. thing for, I have said the same thing, Vic, for years. It's, it is a cash cow. It's all about the money, baby. Everything is it's, it's about the money. And I believe the ACC network, just like the, uh, I'll show you like fine example, the Big 12 has their own network. But Texas has a network outside the Big 12. And the Big 10 is starting their own network. I believe it's going to come to it like this. And I was speaking with another gentleman today about this concerning some business guy. And I was explaining to him, I said, they're going to come a time. You know how all these big venues, like they have any huge uh, uh, playoffs, semifinals at these venues at NFL stadiums. When you have like LSU hold 100,000, Ohio State holds 100,000, uh, or, or Michigan holds 100,000, where the NCAA is going to come to a point to say, you know what, why would we allow hundreds of millions of dollars go to the NFL to the NFL to play in their stadiums when we have our own NCAA venues with the Ohio States and the Michigan allow them to host these playoffs games and get the money to stay rotating not only among the university, but along with the NCAA. But however, they're going to look at a money impact thing, but what you're having to, like, say, for New Orleans, which is 45 miles from where I'm at, what do you have to offer if you've got 200,000 people flocking to watch a, a college semifinal between Miami and Georgia? Lord knows I hope that happened next year. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, there's also talk that Nick Saban part of the coach under with them running it. That's why a lot of these coaches leave. Because he's well, a tyrant, I guess. But he gets results. He does get results. He wins. Hey, caller. Hey, thanks for calling, man. And uh, call again sometime. Oh, I will, man, and I enjoy it, man, and I, I'm just the first time I'm acknowledging and noticing that you are alive, and I appreciate it, and I'm, I'm going to write this down. Yes. You know I mean, enjoy the success, and I'm hoping I can start something like this where I'm at because uh, I can help make <clears throat> Louisiana a hard bedrock for uh, Kane fans. Let's go. go. Kane. <laughs> Let's get it going. Go Thank Kane, you so baby. much. Appreciate it. All right, then. Man, we got people from all over calling the last week. Louisiana. Alaska. I can't wait till August. I can't wait till August when this ACC network launches. I can't wait to see what they put on there. What are they going to put on Besides there? games. They're going to be nothing on there. I don't know. It's how you make it some more Kings baseball if you actually want to watch them. I mean, who knows? Yeah, it might. How good is the baseball team going to be, though? I don't know. We'll find out next month. They start next month. In the next couple weeks, what is it? Next three, four weeks, the baseball plays Rutgers at home. Rutgers. I think it's Rutgers. <laughs> Man, this stuff is funny. I'm still confused as to when Kane Chase became a reliable source. Did I miss something? These people just cannot take it that we're fucking giving the info and beating everybody. They just cannot take it. It's killing them. We beat Andrew Ivins by a fucking hour. On what? On the news of the coaches. These people can't take it. LMAO. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? Hey, how you doing? I'm Rich, man. I'm from Connecticut. I'm oh, Connecticut. Fan. I told you everywhere. What's going on, Rich? Hey, can I make a comment about yesterday's show? Go ahead. Go ahead. All uh, right. You guys think that my, that, that, Nicole is going to start next, the first I do against on Florida? I do. I no think he's way. I, I, don't, I don't either. He is going to start. I don't. That kid, 
that kid is bold legged. He's not as he's not as fast as I thought he was. He has no pocket presence. And then on top of that, he has no pocket presence. Like he just I don't know. I don't like him. He's gonna start, like I'm telling you. He's gonna start. <laughs> so wins, man. Have you even watched Martell yet? Have you even watched the film on him? Yeah, I watched uh, the anything. film. Yeah, but I we just, don't even know if Martell's going to be eligible. No, nah, he'll, they'll find some type of underlying uh, – he'll, he'll play. I'm he, got, he, he got a lawyer. He's not, his dad got big money. I, I'm sure he'll be eligible. He, 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 he's a baller, man. Like, if you just go back and watch that – Baller? On, on Netflix. What are we watching? High he's school? He's a baller. He's a he went high, school, huh? high school. He went to a Juco high school. He went to, like, the IMG of the West Coast. He better ball with that kind yeah, of talent true. around him. That's true, but even even last year at Ohio State when he got in a couple times, like he just like, he just commands the offense. And you, you never saw a Nikozi do that. We've never seen Nikozi just command the offense. The only game he really looked half as good is against Florida State. Other than that, I, I don't know. I just he's just too much. I, I just well, we don't know. Why. Listen, I agree with you a hundred percent. Look at his numbers. His numbers aren't. You know, off the charts. I mean, I, what was he, a 50% completion passer? Well, it's hard. I, I, I it's hard. Have, I know he didn't have an offensive line. It's hard. I know he didn't have a play, hey, playbook. But. It's hard. And when you win three third and longs in a row, your coach calls the same fucking play in a row. It's hard to make completions when yeah. the coach does that. That's I'm true. telling you, like, I've seen Cozy in high school. The offense, I've I seen, just, I just, I, let me ask you a question. I'm Perry Guy. I'm a, I'm, I'm yep. a, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you have confidence that Cozy will learn this new, high-powered, sophisticated offense by August 31st? He'll know just as much uh, as one, Williams. On, on a 1 to 10 basis, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, what, what is your confidence in him knowing it by opening game kickoff? About a, about, about a 7. About a 7. He's gonna know it, man. Okay, are you uh, confident I'm a, I'm a, that are you a, are you confident that he'll stay out of trouble and not do something crazy? Yeah, I'm um, that's my I biggest, that's my biggest problem. Think, is, is, is he gonna flip up? I just I just think he, he just wants you follow him on Instagram and he just wants to be it seems like he wants to be the starting quarterback of Miami, and then he wants to be a dope boy with the gold teeth in and the money sitting on his lap. It's just like it's just ridiculous. Like I don't know. I don't know what that kid. I, I I was a big fan of his, but just watching him this past year, I just, you know, with hey. the off the field stuff, I just don't feel like he got it, man. I think Martel got it, man. Maybe he's going to turn Martel around. Martel got it. I'm telling you. I, hope I, I right. like Williams. He, he absorbs Miami, man. Like, he's just. Y'all hear me? What'd you say about Williams? Yep. I like well, Williams. Williams. I like uh, Vic, Vic, I Vic, like Vic, I, I, I want to ask I you a question. I don't think we have Williams. Vic, I want to ask you a question, Vic. If Williams couldn't remember, learn the last offense and couldn't play because he couldn't remember that offense, how the hell is he going to get this high definition offense you're talking about? I, I, I was thinking, I'm uh, just saying, if, if you're talking well, about I, old Perry I learning the offense. I think, he, I think he's smarter than Nicosi. And he, I, you know, he doesn't have the arm strength that Nicosi has. But, but he didn't I even have the playbook. The ho- he didn't even have the playbook down this year, and that playbook, as you're saying, is easier than the new one. Listen, he, uh, he did last week. Oh. You know what it is, Vic? Vic is Williams is the backup. It's like the backup quarterback for every NFL team. They think he's better than the starter because you've never really <laughs> seen him play. You saw three passes against. <laughs> Savannah State, you, and you saw his high school high My man, you better get prepared for the snowstorm we got coming up this weekend. Oh. Yeah, I know, man. And I'm a truck you better get some bread. You, like, you better get uh, some bread and milk, buddy, tomorrow. Yeah. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in New York. Hey, but Rich. Uh, yeah, we're just supposed to get it Friday and Sunday. Hey, Rich, thanks for calling. We got, we got some more callers on the line, man. All right. Call thanks, back. Man. Good job with the show, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, in the keys. In the keys. What's up? This is D from Jacksonville. What's going on, Jacksonville? I'm agreeing with Nikosi Starr. And, and on top of that, I know everybody's saying the trouble he's been in, but you haven't heard anything for a little minute. 
Not even on social media. You don't see him posting nothing, doing nothing. Y'all don't think he done learned his lesson or trying to learn something. Hey, I'm hoping he did. I'm thinking. He's making mistakes. All he's got to do. And like they said, he didn't. Hey, all he's got to do. Was out. Hey, all, all he's got to do is stop going live. If he never went live, he never would have been in trouble this whole year. If he, everything he did he got in trouble for is because he went Instagram live or Snapchat. That is how he got in trouble. If we didn't have any phones and, and, technology, and, and chatting on Facebook at two o'clock in the morning, who cares? He can't be up at two o'clock in the morning. Vic, what are you doing you up at two o'clock? Vic, what? Have you seen that? You telling me when you were eighteen, nineteen, you didn't make mistakes that you couldn't learn from? Vic, Vic, what are you doing up Dif- at two o'clock in the morning? See if he's on there. I understand what? it was a different era. When I, when I was 18, 19, man, I did some stuff that stupid shit. Right now, I probably would have been in jail. <laughs> but at the same time, kids, kids learn from their lesson. And he, he you know, deleted his Facebook. I mean, what do you got to do to fool the y'all that, damn, give me a chance. Give me a chance to learn from my mistakes. Win. Win, baby. Win. He's going to win the job. Win. He, Book it. You know, my opportunity to win a job. I honestly think he's going to win a job because he's going to be the best quarterback there. Because I did watch Tate Mattel Tate. He ran a lot. And he in the, he was in the best, I mean, the best, absolutely best. If I'm not mistaken, that, that thing beat IMG Tech. Uh, me on the team down here from Florida, right? I don't know if they beat IMG. That's like a but college team. That's man, like a mini, he had a Juco college. team, man. That was a damn Juco team. Oh, you got team. every I mean, you can ask though. Go ahead, Tommy. You can ask Bo. I was in fights and arguments to take it up for Perry. And I, I literally would get into arguments on Facebook and got to the point Bo messaged me to do just stop. Well, I think Perry's on All I'm saying is, get a, you can see it. I mean, it's been months. I'm talking about like a couple of months since you heard from him. And when he went to that bowl game, you didn't even see him in no picture. Let alone talking about on Facebook. And you see right he now you see Brevin on, Joel. He posts on Instagram. He posts on it. He posts his stories on Instagram. He just posted one today with uh, Al Wayne's <laughs> Jr. dancing in the locker room. Was it anything bad? Nope. Al Blaze Jr. dancing. Yep. Exactly. That's a good one. Okay. That's all he's I posting. That's what he needs to post. I tight in. Our tight end was on, um, what's the name, talking about how we going to beat Florida. It's okay. I understand that. But that's not giving no bulletin board material. And then on top of that, nobody mentioned that. Our quarterback, you don't even see him doing anything no more. Right now, he's trying. He's trying. So if, he, if that's the only thing he's coaching is Al Blaze doing a dancing, don't you think, okay, somebody done got to him. Mm-hmm. Somebody done got to his head and said something. And and it's strict as he um many years running the shop right now, he telling them they gotta cut body fat. Yep. That's Miami Heat kind of stuff. Mm. Hey, maybe he telling them that's Pat Riley. Maybe the pressure will get to him. Maybe the pressure will make him better. Maybe that's what he needed. All I'm saying is right now many years on him, and you don't matter fact you ain't seeing too much for none of the quarterbacks to be honest. Mm-hmm. The only one you seeing more about is the quarterback is Tate Mattel. We ain't seeing nothing posted from none of the quarterbacks. Nope. Nope. They all trying to nope. sell the internet. You you might see a receiver, you might see, you know, our tight end, but you ain't hearing nothing from the quarterback. So that coach we got from Alabama, he's doing something. It, it, they they don't have the strict talk to. Yep. Hey, all man. I'm saying that's, that's that's right now, I wanna uplift all the players. That's that's try to make it. He win a job, he win a job. He don't, he don't. But that's not worry about him winning the job. That's give him the opportunity to try to win the job. He's Before we bash him. He's going to win it. He's going to win it. I got to win it. But, hey, man. He's going to win it, too, first. Hey, I appreciate you calling. We got, got another caller. We got another office. I think he got a better arm. But thank you for taking my call. Y'all have yep. a good day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, you're on Kane Shades. What's going on? It's Logan. Hey, man. You know I gotta speak my mind. I've been sitting here listening. First of all, Tate Martell, he was a great high school quarterback. I got it. Guess what? 
Kyle Wright, great high school quarterback. Ja'Cory Harris, great high school quarterback, man. My point being, none of these dudes, including Perry and Jaron Williams, have proved themselves. So until we see them play, we can do all the speculate we want. But until we see them play with an actual offensive line, which we still kind of lack, especially in depth and the coaching staff, who I trust Manny Diaz. I like what he's done. But until then, none of our quarterbacks have proven themselves. So all this stuff we're doing right now, it's cool and everything, but it's all speculation, man. It's all hype. And if we know the last 15 years that's all this team has been is what we've been looking forward to this, we've been looking forward to that, it's been hype this, hype that. Nothing has ever been proven. Yeah, but I think I – think, I'm, I'm coming on a very humble, but I, I'm just trying to be a – We're man. just trying to make we our all pick. Know, man. We sit there and we're we just look making forward a... to the next year. We got this, we got that. We're excited, and it's a disappointment. So we just – we really. So just let me ask you a question. Okay. Absolutely. How many wins do you think – how many think? How many wins do you think we're going to win this year? How many games? Personally, personally, okay. Yeah. So this is obviously an opinion-based question, opinion. so I can give my opinion uh, peacefully. I think we'll win about ten games this season. That's fair. That's fair. I happen to agree with that. If, 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 if our offensive game? line plays well and our special teams coach is worth a shit, we'll definitely win ten games. Definitely. I agree with you. It could. It could be twelve. I no, think you've got to put a, uh, an opinion on Twitter, I, Bo. How many games do you think we're going to win next year? And who, see what the fans say. Who, me? Do we tell you what I think? Go ahead. No, no. Put a, put a post out on Twitter. How many games? We beat Florida. We beat Florida. We beat Florida. We run the table. We beat Florida. That's momentum for the whole season. We beat Florida. We run the table because I'm sorry. There is no way in hell we should lose to anybody in the Coastal. Florida State's got not problems. Our schedule is not hard. got problems. And Louisville's got problems. Mm-hmm. Louisville don't got Lamar Jackson. I'm not worried about Louisville. No, Louisville's terrible now. I mean, that defense can't all, I, all I want out of Miami this year, man, is consistency. If we can consistently play even decent, we'll be perfectly fine, bro. I agree. My only problem right now is, right, the last season, I don't mean to get personal, but last season, right, mm-hmm. last season I had to wake up at 4 a.m. for every damn game or 1 o'clock in the morning because I was stationed in Korea. So that was hell because it was on a Sunday. So that was Saturday night after I was drinking. And then now I'm going to deploy again to Kuwait, so I have to wake up about 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning again to watch this season. And I'm so where you excited at Korea? for this season that hey, where, I really don't want to miss these games. Where were you at in Korea? I was at Hobie. I'm at, uh, I was at Humphrey, bro. Well, I was at Hobie. It's oh, sucks, wow. Man. One of my like, friends uh, was stationed up there. He's a colonel. Yeah, man. I, I'm really, really excited, bro. I'm excited. I just, I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much because every time I get my hopes up before a season, it's disappointing. And I just, that, that's a crappy feeling, man. Especially when you're opening against Florida, man. Like, you don't want to be disappointed. And I don't picture us putting up like three points or something like that against Florida, you know, because we actually have a coordinator now. And I, like I said, I trust Manny Diaz. <laughs> And I, and, and I think our new offensive coordinator is going to do a great job with not only our quarterbacks, but our offense as a whole. But, you know, I just, you know, you're so used to the same mold with this team that it's just, you know, you just got to kind of, you kind of got to be humble and, you know, you got you to gotta be real about what the possibilities are for the season. I agree. I agree with you, man. But a lot, a lot of our quarterback play obviously not only has to do with the offensive line, but last year our quarterbacks were not put in good situations um, uh, specifically Perry, he was not put in the greatest of situations uh, like in the Virginia game to actually have a chance, nor was he really given a chance. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know, man. We'll see. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. You know, like I don't remember the last time we've been getting all these transfers, the Buffalo wide receiver, the USC safety, the quarterback from Ohio State. Like when's the last time you remember Miami land and all these transfers? That's a long, long time ago. And that's something to that actually, you know, it's going to be good. You know, it's something to be happy about, you know, because like, this is definitely different, you know, like what we got going on right now is different from way back before even Larry Coker, you know, this is different. It's, it's different and, and it's a good feeling, you know, but I agree. we'll see, man. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm very, very excited, you know, but I, I just, right now I'm just trusting Manny Diaz. Uh, I got no reason not to. And I, I think he's going to do good things with the program, man, with uh, his young and just his aggressive attitude. It's what this program needs, man. We, we need a coach on the sideline that's going to light a fire under someone's ass when they, when, 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 when they fall star on a first down after a timeout, you know, or those stupid nonsense penalties that we always get, you know. We can't just sit there and just, you know, just 
just let that shit fly. Like, you know, stuff got to be said during the game. You know, we, we we haven't had that since. Personally, I don't remember what maybe maybe, maybe Butch Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited, man. I think I think we need the transfers though because our recruiting class is so bad. I think we need these transfers. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, and I think we're hitting home run transfers too. They're not just transfers. You know, I think the guy from USC. I'm, I'm very glad that we landed him. I, I think he's going to do great here. And I mean, I was talking to a couple of USC fans. And they're saying, you know, y'all got a really, really good uh, safety. So you know, I'm very happy with the transfers we're getting. Yeah, I am too. But hey, man, thanks for calling, man. Keep listening and call back again. Yeah, take care, man. It's always good being around here, you guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Dishes. I mean, he had some energy, man. He had, he had energy, huh, Vic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, guy had some energy. We got some fans getting fired up around here. Gosh. Tommy? We got to get... Where's Vic from Homestead? He hasn't been on in a while. I don't know, man. Maybe he's hiding because maybe NJ scared him away. I don't know. Maybe that... Why would NJ scare him away? Oh, uh, no problem. What the hell did Oh, I, I can't talk about that right now. He's a fat oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, never mind. Because he knows he's not being in one year and one year and one year and Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Fat fuck. Let's see, what's the comment saying over here? I'm 100% sure. 247 Canes. I'm 100% sure Tate Martell will win the starting role. Wrong. Perry. Two four seven canes. I'm in Savannah. I used to live in Savannah. Hold on. I used to live in Savannah. Two four seven canes. Who's that? It's uh, it's Damien. What's going on? Damien, what's up? Nothing. I'm waiting on Q1 Ratcliffe to call in. Talk about his Rat Pack team. We'll have three big time teams calling today from seven on seven. I told you, man. We're we, 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 we're mingling with all the seven on seven coaches and stuff. We're gonna go to the tournaments and we're gonna see the fucking No one's stopping this train, Dan. They just can't stop it, man. That's what's up. Hmm. No, they cannot stop the train, man. I'm telling you, it's on and popping on that other website. I mean they talk they talking. They gotta take notice. They gotta take notice. The funny thing is we've been around for a year. It, they just they just started to take notice. Man. We do. Uh, hey, what's, it's on, man. I'm telling you. It's on. It's on. I, I'm, I'm sitting here reading the comments. And, yeah, we're going through this thing, reading some of these comments. I get a good laugh. I, I love all the rumors. One of their guys has somebody inside. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading this stuff and laughing, man. Mm-hmm. The reason. Oh, you see me? You're, you're reading. Oh, yeah, I'm going through it, man. I'm reading these people and seeing their Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game sheets. No. What? What, what what are you talking about? Game sheet? No. <laughs> and to give a score update to the Lady Kings, it's uh tied at forty seven in the fourth quarter with three twenty left. And this is the women basketball game? Yes. All right. Wow. Let me look over here. Hey, Perry, Perry, they, Perry. We struggled. Oh, they struggled in the third quarter. <laughs> Hey, I, I know some of you guys, it's all, you know, it's, it's some of you guys are taking this, uh, taking the quarterback early thing too, too, too serious, man. It's just a pick. It's four quarterbacks, and you got to pick one now. It's just, it's just. It's I'm, I'm going to wait until we'll do a spring game. But no, and this I'm is the early, early pick. This is the early, early pick. At the spring, you can change your opinion. But right now it's the early, it's like the early, early top 10, you know? It's the early, early pick. After spring, you can watch, be like, oh, I think it might be Williams now, or it might be this guy now. And what the thing is, there can't be no favoritism, because none of these guys have been recruited by Enos. None of them. So there's no favoritism. So all the Williams Just fans. imagine what D imagine what D has to go do during the spring game. For the spring game. Oh, I hope they don't play it in uh sunlight. Hope they go play at that one little park we played in that all other times. 
Daniel, what's that place called to play in? <laughs> Damien? What'd you say? What'd you oh, say? What'd you say? I said, I hope the spring game is in that one place in Fort Lauderdale. What was that little stadium in Fort Lauderdale I went to? Oh, the, um... Is it Trump the, Park? The, the conversation with, um... God damn it, man. We've been there several times. I forgot what it's called. It's right there on, uh... Like, hey! I say you. I hey, know. guess what? Guess what? Fat, fat fuck. What happened? Li- fat fuck is listening to us right now. All right, all right. He says, let him get said, him, let him get himself exposed. Let him said, get himself exposed. I'm gonna say nothing. He Dang. says, you idiots are still Dang. talking about. You sent me, you sent me that inbox. Hey, I'd like to see. Hey man, make a, 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 don't even say nothing. Let him expose, no. let him expose himself because he's doing, he's doing no. us a favor. By listen, when, 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 but listen to what he wrote, him, man. When he has that. David, you gotta listen to this. When he has that chemical imbalance problem, it helps us. You gotta listen to this. I tried to recommend him to what well, happened. You gotta listen. He says, let it go, clowns. Us let it go? Are you fucking serious? You fucking fat fuck. Mm. Stay off my fuck. But he got a he got yeah, man, he got a severe he got a severe problem, man. He thing. does. I mean a mental illness is like a real severe thing. And no mental illness is severe. Mental, mental illness is a severe thing here in this country. I recommended him medicine. I, I, I even showed him the doctor to go to. He needs to get on meds and he needs to leave us alone. He said we need to let him go. He doesn't manage time. He ain't worth talk about. I hate that. Fat exactly. Boy. You know what, man? I don't want to give it. Give, I don't know why we give it him fucking up for free plug. Because he's fucking. We didn't get about the plug. I don't like him. He says mm. we need to let it go. We need to let it go. He yeah. needs to let it go. We, I, mean, honestly, I, I know you don't want to hear this, Bo. Uh, he really needs to start paying attention to his girlfriend. He really does. I wish I could have fucked that up. He loves you. Yeah, man. I know he does, man. Why? Did he pay attention to us? He's paying attention to us. He's gonna get. He's gonna get a video leaked out with with, with some men on on his own woman. He needs to start paying attention to us and worry about his girl. And worry about. He needs to learn to walk and not fall down stairs or fall off a curb. Yeah. Just saying. He needs to learn how to. <clears> not. Yeah. He's worried about us. He needs to find a way to provide for her, or she'll find another man to provide for her. Leave us alone. I mean, shoot. I've seen tapes and Damn. videos are putting foot in front of each other, putting put one foot in front of each other, and he fell. Yeah. Dame, could you inbox me the logo of the picture of me? I mean, you sent it to me, but I can't really see it. Listen, Rick. Listen, listen. <laughs> you gotta do. Can you get on you YouTube and on, on your on your on your uh, TV, Vic? Yes, yeah, you got YouTube. Listen, yeah, listen, but listen. I'll what you gotta do? Yeah, well, that's that's up. why I told you forty-five just, minutes ago. You gotta press mute. Just hang up. You gotta up. press mute on your phone and then press play. Just hang up the phone. And then do you I see did. the picture? I did. Hang up the phone. I saw the watch. picture, but I can't. It's it's tiny. I need to see it better. Okay, I mean, okay. I you want to see what it looks like? You want to see the full? Okay, I got you, Dick. I got you, Dick. I want to see all four of them. The picture. I saw Tommy. I saw Paul. I saw you. I, I don't know what picture you put up of me. You're holding the pool stick. You're holding the pool You're stick. Me. You look like a legit gangster today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send Damien a different picture of me. I got one with uh, Lawrence Kingsley's gloves. Me throwing to you up Okay, where? okay. Yo, that was a rough, that picture, man, that was a rough draft. I just put anything together. That definitely, that picture will not go on the next show. We'll, well, I'll put something, like, when I see it on the big screen, I notice what I fucked up. Mm. So. Well, let's get to the comments. Yeah, I looked it out. I looked it out on my TV. I pulled it up on YouTube on my TV. Sam Camacho says, Bogle will be a king. Give me a shout out when it happens. All right, Camacho, if I remember. Richard Matter, just blog in. Richard Matter, turn down the volume. Yeah, you guys, you can turn the volume down on yours. Bogle will be a cane. I want to know what shirts we're going to get for the 707 tournament. Gunner. We're getting, we're getting some polo shirts, man. All right, someone's background is going on. I can hear it. I just heard it. I don't know. Maybe, was it Dick? No, I think it's Damien. Uh, 
Let's see. Can we get Boykin to call back? It's not me. It's not me. Savage now. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything. Can we get Boy? Can we get Boykin to call back in? Bring me this Savage now. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get that. We'll get it back. We'll chat this visit. I want to know what shirts we're going to get. Oh, stupid turnover. Thanks for the call, Damien. You, my boy, love you all. Mr. All about to you. Man, someone's background is going off. Damien, it's yours. That's not me, God damn it. That's not me. It's probably, it might be Vic. Vic, you got to – hold on. No, gonna, it's not me. I'm going to find out right now. Here we go. It's not me because I've got the Lady Kings door. Hold on. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damien. Watch what? this. Hold on. Watch this. Not me. You there? See, it's yes, Damien. It's Damien. Not me. Hold on. I got to answer this call. Hold on. Hello? Nothing on the show. What's up? You got some info for me? You got some breaking news? Breaking news. I see Drew Ivins is on the radio. Oh, really? Well, oh. since, since Bo's doing really? this, I'll oh. give a score update. 52-48, Lady Kings, 39.1 left. All right, Ryan, you got the ball. Wow. What's that? What would you say? No, I had to take that call. That guy gives me information, man. Coach Rat, hold on. I hold said on. that uh, I said that the Lady Kings were up 52-48 with 39.1 left and got the ball. Think how we can beat Duke. I'm happy. Hold on, I got a uh, Kiwan Ratcliffe calling in for the head coach of the Rat Pack. I don't know how he said. He says he's getting a busy signal. I don't know how he's getting a busy signal. There's no way he's getting a busy signal. Key one. Look, we're going to have a Seminole on tonight. A Florida, Florida Gator on tonight. All right, someone's background's going. That's Vic. It ain't me. I'm telling you, I just heard, I can tell where it's coming from. No, it's not you. It's not, it's not me. I can't wait to play the Gators. I'm tired of the Gainesville fans down here. I agree. I'm right there with you. Let's see. How many people are from this area, Central Florida? Where's 352 came from? So just a couple of teams I wish we could play on the schedule. I know you're not on. Damien says I'm not on. Saban, head coach leaving too. I think Bama about to get popped. Pop, something ain't right. They're not about to get popped. Oh, wait. Attorney for Tate Martell lays out case for transfer to Kane's football to get immediately eligibility after leaving. Let's see. Hmm. Really? It says here. I mean. It says here the... Martel announced his transfer and will request a waiver for immediate eligibility. That definitely is part of it. Uh, his attorney said, you try to throw as much as against the wall as you can. I think the fact that there were some circumstances that happened, some personality clashes at the school, we want to be fair to everyone involved. That's the approach we're going down. And... He specializes in sports cases. This guy's name is uh, Travis Leach. And information is being gathered to present a compelling case for his immediate eligibility. A waiver request will be filed with the NCAA. And basically, when he committed to Ohio State, Maya was the head coach, and Beck and Warren have shared the offensive coordinated duties. And by the time he left, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, one second. And by the time he left, uh, Beck and Warner were out and Day was in. 
So Martel Redshirt is in place sparingly. He was backed up. He backed up to Haskins. And you know the NCAA has been harshly criticized in recent years for coaching coaches having the means to freely change jobs, while players are left to the whims of the NCAA and their strict transfer rules. So maybe this might be able to get it done for them. Maybe. That'll be even more competition. It worked for Michigan quarterback Shea Patterson. We got him for two years, right? Three. Three. If he gets three. The, three. If he gets the waiver. Then where did all this talk come from? I see people talking that he would graduate in, was it May or June? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, where the world, I was like, there ain't no way. If, he, if he's got two of the years of travel, it's waiting for him to set out here. Well, you're but right. It'd be nice day. to get him for three years if he does get the starting job. Yeah, I know. I'd like to get three years out of him. So then if he is the best right. one to win, he got three years. If Cozy wins, we got, what, three years. Right. If Williams wins, you got four years. Big Kane said he took college classes in high school. That's why. We need D tackles. I agree, Fresh 3542. If I had to guess, I saw Martell win just because of his mentality. He's a dog. I do like his mentality. I won't lie about that. I like how he said it's my job. Um, I mean, I've seen this kid play in high school. I watched him on TV when the ESPN put that stuff for one. He played St. Thomas Aquinas. I agree. I agree. Man, what's this guy doing? Wait on the call. Man, I'm a little bit angry. I need to figure out how to block this guy from watching, man. man. If you just knew what he was doing. Hmm. I really... Hmm? I really don't care. I do. Cause like I said. I do because it's affecting us. Uh, he's doing some dirty stuff. Just, just let me call me after the show and let me know. He's there ain't no point in putting it on here. He's doing some dirty shit, man. That's why he's listening. There is a, I mean, there's got to be a way because I, because I told you what happened to me on that one channel. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you know how him, he's got fucking 50 fucking emails. Look how many fucking Facebook accounts he's got. True. The kid is trash, Jamie Gilmore. Thank you, Tommy Beard, for making me a Canes for Life, Karen Beard. Who's that, your daughter? No, that's my ex-wife. Oh, you made her a Hurricane fan? Yeah. Wow. She was all about Pitt. And you Pitt? know about that living up here in this area. That's a just I can't stand Pitt. I hate Pitt. That's one thing I did say growing up in a family of WGU fans. That's one thing they did get that they put in me is to hate Pitt and Virginia Tech. They didn't hate Virginia Tech, but Pitt was a rival anyways. Mm. Wow. I despise wow. fucking Pittsburgh. But I'll be up there. I go to that game every year that I can make it. I'm going this year. I've already got the hotel booked. I'm actually staying. Oh, I'm my, actually going to stay in. Miami, Miami versus gonna, Pitt? Yeah, I'll be there. I'm staying in. When, when is the Hill. date? When is the date? The 26th of October. All right, let me look my calendar. Oh, Vinny, you know it's probably the weekend. You got your kids. Yeah, I, Vic, I can't believe time. Vic doesn't make man, his son I'll go to the game. I'll just grandmother watch her. Man, Vic, I'll make my son uh, go to the game, man. You're going to the damn game. Get your shit on. We're going. Shit. There's no fun. <laughs> it has to be on. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh ain't that far from here. No, well, first of all, that's my uh, – I already checked. I have my kids that weekend. So, um, no, I uh, – me and my well, my significant other, we're like um, – Israel and Palestine, so uh, she'll never switch up. And my mom lives 
um, about 30 miles from me, and she doesn't drive. So Take them to the game. Yeah. You're on King Chase. I think you're on King Chase. All right, hold on. We got a call. Shay. Hey, you're on King Chase. What's going what's on, Georgia King? This Georgia boy. What's going on? Not much, man. What do you think? What's happening in the Peach State? He's back again. What I'm are you back thinking? Back again, man. We're telling me something new. We got some new coaches, man. Um, we got us a wide receiver coach. We got us a tight end coach. Oh, think? yeah, we got a full roster now, huh? Yeah, we're loaded up. Now we got to get some players. We got to get some offensive lines and D-tackles. Yeah, I agree with the D-tackles, offensive line. It's going to happen. Maybe one more pass have... rusher. You think Boga ain't switched over yet? <sighs> Not yet. People in the comment section thinks it's coming, but I don't know. I, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not banking on it. I can't. I can't rely on this if he's coming or not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not banging on it until he make it solid. You know what I mean? If he want to join the, join the, join the dynasty. He he he'll join. Hey, how about the Boykin kid in Georgia, man? What do you think about him? Oh, dog, he a straight dog, man. You think we can get him? Matter of fact, I think we're gonna matter of fact, him. the reason why I called in early is uh, my nephew. You know, uh, he played with Bainbridge High. Mm -hmm. And we go travel to Tennessee tomorrow. It's like seven hours away to play in the um he played in the all star game over there in Tennessee. Really? Yeah, it's called the um Georgia All Star playing against Tennessee All Stars at three o'clock on Saturday. It's called the Food City Board of Bowl over there between Tennessee and South Carolina yeah. on the borders over there in the mountains. You remember back in the day when the Florida Georgia game was like the biggest All Star game there was? Oh man, they need to bring that back. Now you, I know. Even man. though Florida used to beat their ass, that used to be but, a good game, man. That used to be the biggest All Star game there was, man, back then. Now, yeah, Georgia Florida. Yeah, really yeah, tough. that was the biggest one. Yep. Yeah, Jamal Lewis. He had all kinds of guys playing that game, man. I think Devin Hester played in the last Georgia-Florida game they had. That was the last one they had. Now it's not the same no more. Now it's some trash. <laughs> now it's trash. Let's see. But the, what, what's the wide receiver coach, man? He, he, I, that's the one we was talking about the other night, right? Yeah, a Sutterfield guy. Yeah, same one I was telling you about the other night. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. He got a strong whistle. I like him. Well, can he recruit, though? But that's why we got Stephen Fields. He can recruit. He's the recruiter. Boy, I like Cooney, man. Cooney is a big man, dog. Man, but I think Cooney's gone, man. I think he's leaving, man. He's pissed off, man. He's pissed right now. Are you serious? Yeah, they didn't even interview him for either of the jobs. And Oregon. Come on, man. Oregon, Louisville, FSU, and Auburn have reached out to him, man. Um, oh my goodness! He's pissed. They didn't even—they promised to interview him. They didn't even give him an interview. They should have at least interview him and say, "Look, man, we're gonna get this guy right here, but you're next up." No, at least interview him. Yeah, I heard they didn't even interview him. At least, man. So, at right, least I heard. I heard they, he's already getting contacted, man. Vic, what is up with your phone, yeah, Vic? What's up? I don't know. I just got disconnected. What's going on? It's making a noise, man. See that shit? Oh, Vic. Is that your phone, Vic? That's Vic's phone. Vic, your phone's fucked up, man. <laughs> Somebody doing some scratching or something. He's doing something. We got fucking fleas or something over there. Well, no one touched the face looks like a Humpty Dumpty in that picture. I, That's because he's, he's, he's so bad, bro. You and your boy. Hmm? But yeah, man. Um, so we we didn't get nobody new today. Nope, no. Nope, I'm talking about know. recruit wise. We got the kid, the Mr. Kid committed to Mississippi State. Darius Washington, the guard. He's coming to visit uh -huh. this weekend. He's coming for a visit. I don't know if we can flip him, but he's committed to Mississippi State. They got him coming to take a the OB. So we'll see if we can flip him. So I don't know, man. We, we need some offensive linemen, I feel. I think we need some defensive tackles. Oh, and the kid from UCLA, 
that African kid with a weird name. I can't even say his name. He he, he uh, de tackle. He's coming to visit this weekend too. That's that's going to be the transfer or just yeah. He's just transfer. Regular. He's transfer. And then the Plumley kid, the quarterback, oh. the little white kid from Mississippi. They um, he's not coming no more. They they stopped talking to him. Now they're talking to that kid from uh, New Orleans or Louisiana instead. Something about the wide receiver. No, the quarterback, the little quarterback, Plumley. Quarterback, quarter. Oh, okay. Yeah, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plumley. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, not, crumbly. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, I got it mixed up. I'm sorry. He's, yeah. not, he's not coming no more. So oh. they're recruiting this kid from uh, Louisiana. I forgot his name. God. That that was Echo's boy, right? Yeah. He knows he's bringing. Well, he's looking at this guy named. Uh, let me see. I got it right here. I just got pulled it up. Here we go. His name is uh, Legrand. 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 Something like that. Yeah, Lance Legender, something like that. He's from uh, Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana. Pretty, he looks it's pretty. It's least over there in Louisiana. He looks. You know, that's where Ed from. So he looks pretty big. He's like a big kid. I have to look his tape up. I got. Let, let, let me see him. Let's see if I find him on two four seven here. Copy. What, what his style? Is he a dual thread or a uh, pro style quarterback? Hold on. I don't know. I can't tell you. Well, let me see. <laughs> Four star. Let's see. Here he is. Dual threat says. Dual threat. Oh, you... I'll give you a description of him right yeah. now. It says uh, 63206. Man, he's pretty tall. Okay. That's big. That's big. That's a nice, that's nice, that's nice. That's pretty damn big kid. Think about what Cam was when he came out. Who, Cam Newton? Yeah. Oh, man, I wish he was a fucking Cam Newton boy. Oh, we're going to get a ring. <laughs> Just don't steal no laptop. Well, we'll show we'll be, go. We'll show up be blessed we get a Cam Newton. <laughs> Just don't get in trouble. And get, some offense, and get some offensive but, line. Without the trouble. Shoot. Without the trouble. Without the stealing and everything don't else. Don't steal no laptop. Just don't do that. Shit. Man, you know what, though? I'm happy that happened. Because if he would have stayed at Florida, man, they would have kept getting rain. That, man, that thing would have, that train would have kept on rolling. From Tebow to him. Yes, it would have. God. So, in a way, I'm happy that shit happened. Because, God, it would have been, been sucked to be us. I mean, how would you have stopped so that? Folks, I ain't going to lie. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. I became a Cam, a, Cam, a Cam Newton fan when he went to Auburn. I ain't going to lie. I still am a Cam Newton fan. Hmm. Are you? That man's a beast. I met him, man. He's you big. can't help. Let me tell you. You I, hate them both. I met him, man. He's big as fuck. I remember I looked at him and I said, how the fuck you tackle this guy? He's big as a motherfucker. <laughs> shit. Fuck, his legs are bigger I think, than me. I think he get punished for it in the NFL because they act like he a linebacker or something. They don't call no flags on him. Man, he's a big dude, man. Uh, uh, corners and DBs, they're not that big. They got they got to hit him low, man. He's fucking huge, man. Cause he, he's got a seven on seven. I remember. Team. Yeah, bro. Cool. I said he's got a seven on seven team. He's out there coaching and stuff. He had Hasselwood on that team. Yep. It's a yeah, Georgia I have, team. I, I don't attend the one ball up there in Atlanta. Yeah, I went to that one, too. I went to that one uh, two years ago, the one in Atlanta. Matter of fact, I was up there two years ago. Yeah, you're talking about we that, had a team up there. You're talking about that big, nice, comp, like, brand-new complex, got all the football fields and yeah. shit? Out of this high school? No, it wasn't at high school. They got this, like, sport complex, some kind of sport complex. They had, like... All these baseball fields, and they got all. It's, it's right. It's north of Atlanta, and they got all these. Uh, I oh, forgot okay. what the place is called. Man, that place was nice as shit, man. But they had a baseball okay. tournament we, going on, and cheerleading. We never time. did make it to there, but uh, we played. We got knocked out at the um at his high school where um the first doing the first round because we were just we were just we just had put a team together, Georgia All Star. Mm -hmm. Shoot, his team, his team got Under Armour everything, man. Them boys. Phew. Yep. Mm. They got two jerseys, two shorts, tights, shoes, cleats. He got best of the best. We lost to them in the championship game. We lost to them in the championship. 
Who, but man, the referees who, who, who be y'all? cheating for him, man. They be cheating for him, man. Who is who? Who? What team y'all had in them? Oh, we had the three, five, two stars. But man, they be they, oh. they they cheat for him, man. I'm telling you, man. He gets some fucking calls, man. God, he he can work them refs. I mean, they probably his reps and all. <laughs> man, shit. There were some bad calls, man. But it is what it is. Let's see. Cam Newton was 6'6", 230, coming out of high school, Terrell Rich says. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I remember when they played, he played LSU. I think it was at Auburn. And he ran Patrick Peterson over. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. I remember because he lowered his shoulder and he ran. It was Patterson or it was the other court. The kid, what was the honey badger? But I believe it was Patrick Patterson. The power was Patrick Patterson. He ran him over. Mm. But listen, the quarterback from Clemson, right? I seen him play when he was in high school. Man, they need to come up with a rule for um, college players to leave after two years. Because he don't need to stay at Clemson three years. You don't think so? Man, he the real deal, man. Like, for real. Like, for real. What you seen against Alabama, that's what he been doing his whole life. And he only getting better. So you think he's like the next Peyton man? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Come on, man. He the real deal, bro. He the real deal, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you something I've seen with my own eyes. How good was he in high school? Man. I mean, well, he probably had, like, all-star receivers and shit. No. No. He just he just a student of the game first. God. I don't know, man. I, I thought, but, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought Clemson was going to – I mean, Alabama was going to bring the heat and light his ass up. Like they did the um, Oklahoma the first couple drives, but um, third down. Man, like I thought 30, he went. 12, I thought he wasn't gonna last either, Bo, because of you know you remember that first game he started when they knocked him out the game. Yeah, against Syracuse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like this is what he about to see all year. That's what I thought every team was gonna do, but bro, he stood up. God, Syracuse should have won that game. I don't yeah, know why Syracuse, Syracuse didn't did. stop the run. Clemson ran the ball down their throat. I would have loaded the, the box. Ball in, they just ran the ball down their throat. They should have loaded the box yeah. and try to stop that damn run and make that third string quarterback beat you. Shoot. But it is what it is. Let's see. Trevor Lawrence is more like a Carson Palmer. No way. No. No. Carson Palmer? No. Carson Palmer wasn't that bad until he pulled that ACL. And that, uh, what was it, wild card game against Pittsburgh. After he tore that ACL, he was nothing. <laughs> he played for the Raiders. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, funny. <laughs> I guess it's better than playing for that Jacksonville team. Hey. They got to put a pool. They got to put a pool in the damn stadium just to or sorry, two pools in a stadium to get people fans to show up. Don't even get me started. <laughs> It is what it is. He says Carson Paul yeah. NCAA at USC. Man, I don't, I, know. I I don't, don't see him pay Manning status yet because pay Manning a Hall of Famer. But I will put him in the same category as Matt Ryan. You remember how Matt Ryan was before he left college? Yeah, right. I wasn't Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan. I wasn't a big Matt Ryan fan, man. I don't know, man. I'm not a Matt Ryan fan now because I'm a Latin Falcons fan. But anyway. You know, but coming out of college, he was tough. Uncle Joe says Trevor Lawrence is more like Ryan Leaf. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on. I don't see that kid's attitude like that, man. A bigger golf. Man, I don't know. Yeah, but, man, you got to think the catches those wide receivers are making. One mm-hmm. hand on the sideline. All that stuff. Hold on. Hey, you're on Kane yeah, Shades. Yeah, he, he got. Hold on, we got another. We got another caller. Hey, you're on Kane Shades. Hey, it's MJ. Who is this? MJ. 
What's up? Hey, when you are, are you on the are you on the Darren Williams train yet or not? Perry, man, Perry. <laughs> yeah, we went round and round about that the other night. Uh, no, I tell you, uh, I tell you, if Martell gets eligible, I think it's over for all of them. I think the kid's got the swag. He's got the moxie. I think he's gonna come in and blow everybody out. That's what I think. I just hope the one that wins has a breakout year. That's what I hope. No, I know. I, I love. I love Nikosi. I mean, I think arm talent. He's got. I mean, like you said, you said before, he makes every throw. I mean, he's got the arm that you just you dream of, but. Man, the accuracy problems he had at, at the end of the year were just yeah, was, bad. I don't know. It was. You're going to see a big difference in Perry once he get with this real quarterback office coordinator coach. Yep. I, I, yeah, I hope so, too. I hope because, I mean, that's all he's lacking. I mean, he can throw yep. it. I mean, he can he can throw it, no no doubt. Yeah. And I think this will be closer to the offense, offense he played in high school, too. So... But the thing is, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I hope Martell can go to spring. I hope we can get go to spring and play spring though, because I like yeah. to have all of them on yeah. even playing field. So when the when the regular when the fall camp starts, everyone's even. Everyone knows the same shit. Mhm. That's what. Yeah. I mean. yeah, Martell, Martell, and, and, Martell and, Go ahead. So Martell, Martell and and Williams are gonna have. Gonna have the accuracy over Perry. It'll be whether Perry can overcome that, and because what I've seen out of Martell, man, he puts it, he puts it on a on a dime. So, you know, uh-huh. any of you all see uh, Weldon transfer? No, did he? I said, are you? Do you see him? Do I you don't see know. him transfer uh, out? I don't know. Yeah, he's got to. He he's well, got to. He, he's not three even quarterbacks ahead of him. Yeah, he's not. He don't even get mentioned. I mean, I hate it for the kid, but he's not. I knew when he came when they took him. I was like, man, why is he coming here? Yeah. Well, I, I was always thought. I always wondered if Rick did a favor just for you know who he was. Dad. But... I was like, yeah, because Rick did coach his daddy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Florida State. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what that was. That's but what man, that was. you think yeah. his dad would want to put him in a yeah. situation where he could play? I mean, if you went to a smaller school, maybe like a Mac school or something, I don't know. If yeah. you wanted, wanted to play, fresh as he's I mean, he didn't. I mean, he didn't look. He didn't look terrible when he got a chance to play, but I mean, he's just not. I don't know. He's not flashy, so he don't stand out. Yeah. He's another one we haven't. I haven't, we haven't really seen enough of them. I think in spring. That's why I hope all four of them play in spring because I want to see all of them. They're all going to get the same reps. There's going to be no favorite. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, that's. I, I think. I hope that's what Manny does because I don't think. I don't think Rick gave everybody a fair shot. I. I don't think so. So. And I, I don't see I Manny, Manny showing favoritism towards none of the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Sure. He said the linebacker. He said nah. the linebackers ain't guaranteed to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know that was funny. <laughs> So that's and we case. all know damn well that Pinkley and, yeah. and, and Quarterman <laughs> and McLeod started. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no way they're not starting. But I would like to see Avery Huff and get on the field. That dude looks like him. I think he's going to I think he's gonna show out when he gets a chance. Um, uh, this, I think uh... – I don't know, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to see them hurry up, get to this signing day, see who we get here, and then we'll start looking ahead to spring. But I, I, I'm, I'm real. I, I, do you think we'll get Bogle? I, I keep. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Some somebody keeps saying he's gonna. He's got some news coming tomorrow. You know, I keep hearing so many, so much stuff. Uh, I mean, I did hear right up to signing day. I did hear that. I mean, he was literally torn. I never did hear that Tennessee was number two. I always heard we were it was, you know, neck and neck between us and Bama. So I I still think he's torn. I mean I think he just he had to pick something and 
So he just picked whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough spot to be in. If you're really not 100%, you got, you're on national TV and you got to pick something. God, that's a tough situation. Actually, that Army game, we knew everybody, almost everybody watches it. That follows recruiting. Yeah, I know. Right. I I think he just did. I think he just did it because of Saban. I I think he didn't want to let Saban down. Um, you know, literally, I think that's. Or someone called him and told him, "Hey, do this, do this." Yeah. He should have did him like the uh, Bush did him. Man, he should. I don't know, man. He's got to look at what the depth chart. You got to look at the depth chart. Oh, they, I know. They got six right now. I know. Well, so why the hell? I looked it up the other night because I, I, I don't know. That's what, what's the I name? mean, that's six coming in this year. That's not even counting. I know the what they the got. Team. I mean, then who knows how they're, where he sat on their board. Man, that's a lot of competition. Coming well, see, that, was, that was Yeah, that was the thing I was talking about. Quentin, Quentin Williams, when did you ever hear about him until this year? And he's a junior. He, he didn't. He, I get, you know, he sat on the bench for two years. Man, I don't know, man. I hope I hope we get him. If, you got to think, if I'm Bogle, if I'm his dad, I'm thinking, look, hey, son, if we go over here in Alabama, they want us to gray shirt, you're going to have to sit out for a while, you're not going to play for a while. You got, Then you get there, you have all this depth in front of you. You go to Miami, you got a good chance of being – you're not going to start, but you're probably going to be in the rotation, give some reps. And then next year when Garvin or somebody leaves, you're going to be the man. Yeah, I mean, he could be – I mean, he could got a good chance to be the man this year, too. Yeah, but I'm saying starting off, he'll get reps. And then our schedule – I mean, after Flor- we play Florida, and then we got North Carolina, then we got some cupcakes where you get a lot of reps in. And I figure by the middle of the year, he'll have enough on, um, you know, we'll see what he's got. But, man. Yeah. I'm just not understanding. Well, the way Manny rotates – Go ahead. Yeah, and the way Manny rotates guys in, I mean, the way he rotates, I mean – you know, yeah, like you said, he could get to play pretty early. Just pretty being, early. being on the rotation. And then uh, I'm hoping we get this D tackle from UCLA, the, uh, the African kid. We need depth. We need some depth. I, I think, yeah. I think we get Where him. Else he be, I th- where I else did he look go? I don't know. But he's coming to Miami this weekend, man. I think Florida offered him. I don't know where he visited. But, man, we need him. We need, get, we need a, yeah. a good rotation going on there, man. I think we get I think, him. I think uh, I feel good about Boykin too. I like Boykin. I like him a lot, man. I think mm-hmm. he's going to be. A, yeah. I think he's got a lot of upside. He's explosive as hell off the ball. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I watched his tape, man. He I is, wouldn't be surprised. Nah, I wouldn't be surprised if he came in with, if say him and Bogle came in here, and by two or three years down the road, he could be better than Bogle. Yeah. And I think we're uh, they're saying we're gonna get that uh, the Hunt kid too from up in New York. New York, I hope so, man. He's a big kid, him and Bliss, and then they got the Holly kid in Georgia. So we got some t- t- d- yeah, young uh, D tackles. But man, how are we gonna replace him and that e- Willis? Huh? I said, man, how, how are we gonna replace Willis? Oh, that, I, I mean, that that like- looks like. Of the West Coxie game, that looked like that was the biggest thing. They ran the ball right where he would have been. Yeah, but you know what? Oh, yeah. You know what, though? Last year when McIntosh and um, what's the other kid that went pro? When those two left, I was like, Morty. I was like, fuck, what are we going to do? And then Willis comes in and just freaking has phenomenal year. Like, could you imagine if we would have had those three rotating? Oh, man, it would been, we would have been. Oh, man. For yeah, our offense. Yeah, we missed we missed Willis in the bowl game. It, yeah, you know, we did. They run right at where he he just stuffed, he just stuffed all those. I I don't know how you replace that guy. That guy was unbelievable. I don't. Know. I know, and I didn't see it coming. I was like, man, is this guy ever going to be anything? He's always going back home or got some kind of family issue. And but man, he, I guess maybe that NFL money got like this is my year to make it to the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought well, that's all it takes nowadays. I'm hoping that good year and you're you're fit. I'm hoping that's what happens with Jeff Thomas. He says this is it. I want to go to the NFL. I got to have a big year. Oh yeah, that was man. That, that's going to be huge. Him and Peyton. I, I hope Peyton comes through. I hope he he. 
they they say they I mean I've I've heard nothing but just people have just raved about how good he is. So I watch his highlights. Yeah, I hope I hope they have some special packages for Jeff, man. Real talk. Me too. Dude, I'm I put him in the backfield and hand him the ball. I, yes, I mean, sir. Yeah. The ball. I just yes. get him, just hand him the ball and let him run. I mean that's and that's what Manny said in his press conference. He said we want to get them the ball and let them run. And that's what we need to do. Put him in like a Percy Harvin type role, like in the slot, put him exactly. in the backfield a little bit. Yeah. Jet sweeps, some little screens. I mean, he can do everything, man. But you you know, you know he might be in the, that package like they had Jacobs for um Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Jacobs played I mean, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you got him and you got Yeah, Dallas. but even if you put you put him in motion, run him in motion like behind the quarterback, even if you don't hand him the ball, them guys are going to be scared to death that he's going to get the ball. Yeah, you remember they used to do that? Even if you do that and you fake it to him, don't act like you're going to throw a pass to him. You know the corner and linebackers are going to jump back. You oh, yeah. You're going to be scared it. You remember back in the day they used to do that with Santana Moss. He'd come in motion and they'd take the hand off to him. They used to do that with Santana Moss all the time back in the day. Oh, yeah. And that was out of that's a damn I formation and a pro set. Yep. They did that with Roscoe, too. Yeah. We did Roscoe and da- and Davin. I'm like, man. We used they, to get Davin a sweep. They got to respect it. They got to respect it. They got to. I just, I just hope we get away from this running up the middle running offense. I mean, we got nothing but speed. We need to be getting to the to the outside of the defense. I'm so tired of watching them run up the middle, run up the middle. Yeah, we don't have the offensive line yet for that, in my opinion. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh. We're not Alabama. Yeah, we we had 300 yards rushing when we went to the spread, when we spread everybody out. I want to see more motion and and more motion and, 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 you know. Oh, we're going to see motion. Different. We're going to see motion. We're going to see different formations. I mean, we kept seeing yeah, the same formation. formation, motion, just anything to throw the defense off. That shit Rick was doing. I'm going to see I, what Brevin Jordan does in this offense, too. Oh, exactly. Oh, I'd like to see some two tight end sets with him, <laughs> him and Mallory. I'd like to see some two tight end sets. There's yes. so much stuff. Mallory and Brevin, they need to yeah. get them guys the ball. Man, you see what how New England does. Yeah, they go two tight end set, come out, back out with – man, New England switches it up all the time. We, we got the guys to do it. That's that's two mismatches right there. Right I mean, there. on the field. Yeah. You remember how? Um, I think I was about to say Nick Saban, but um, Urban Meyer used to use the, his tight ends. The her, him, with the one that got locked up. Oh, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shoot, I remember in college they have freaking they be doing them little pitch plays to Hernandez. He come back and Tebow pitches yeah. pitch, pitch to him. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's Dan Mullen, man. Dan Mullen is hell of a damn coach up there in Florida. I hate to say it, but that guy can coach, man. Oh yeah, he yeah you got to give him credit. He can coach. I, I think I'm He's throwing all Hodges this recruiting stuff Larry Hodges. in there. I like yeah Hodges. We got forgot about him. He's coming in as a freshman. I mean. And he's built just like Brevin. He's kind of a, just a big wide receiver is all he is. So We still got to beef him up, put weight on him. I mean, we just, man, we got weapons, man. We got a lot of weapons. We just got to use them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we need to find somebody line. to get on the ball. Give him the ball. I think we need to got this new offensive line coach. He cannot be worse than what we just had. You know, I can't oh, wait. But, I can't I, wait. I I don't understand. We don't even offer a five-star offensive lineman. We don't. I mean, we don't even offer them. I mean, why not? That's what I don't. That's what I never understood. I don't know. I mean, we put an offer don't with even. the one kid up here my way in Huntington, West Virginia. The yep. uh, what's it? Daryl Daryl Wright. He was a he's a five-star. Don, Don we Wright, offered yeah. him. Yeah, but we I mean, offered him. But we're not going after him hard right now. We're not, we're not even on it. I, I don't know what's going on. I haven't heard. He, he's actually with Mutes. You see how cold it is up there he right now? Been, 
You see how cold it is up there right now? Bring his ass down to Miami. Yeah, I'm living here. Let him feel that fucking 78, 82 degree <laughs> weather. He said, look, your mom and dad back home freezing their asses off. You down here at the fucking beach. Shit. Yeah. Right now they it's say, 31. I think he's to about feels... a... I agree. Shit. I think he's about 100% Tennessee. That's what. I mean, we can't beat Tennessee at recruiting. I know. And and what what's what's Tennessee telling him? Playing time? What would we be telling him? Dude, you see our offensive line last year? It was trash. You can play right away if you come in here and beat the guy out. Yeah. I mean, he held his – I was wondering because some of the competition that he played, it wasn't up far. So that's why I really watched the Under Armour game. And he helped his own. So, I mean, 6'6", 3, what was it, 310, 320? I, I think he – shit. Mm-hmm. Good feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we offered him and we offered Neil. Is that I think only two five stars we offered probably? I don't know, man. We gotta get this offensive line better for sure. For sure. What do we got going on here? Someone sent me something. The Lady Canes one fifty eight fifty. That's good to know. Got about 10 minutes Good job, left. Lady Canes. Got yeah. about 10, min- 10 minutes left. All right, guys. Enjoy it. Hey, thanks for calling, man. Call back again. Yeah, sure thing. See you, guys. Yep. Hey, Georgia Kane, I got a question for you in the comment section. 247 oh, yeah. Kane says, Kane Shades, who is that Bowie kid, ninth grader? Bowie? Yeah. From Bainbridge? Say it again. To my buoy from Bainbridge. Yeah, the kid you were talking about last night, the freshman. Yes, sir. Uh, he bad. That's a bad boy. I'm telling you. That's a bad boy. He, he a freshman. He a freshman. He play offense and defense. Special teams, punt return, kickoff return. Yeah. Yeah, they're asking about him. They're asking about him in the comments. Spell it. Hey, spell his name. Okay. Is it? Hold on. I, I don't know exactly how to spell it. Spell it. Just spell it close as you can. They'll figure it out. They'll put it in the Google. B. I think it's B O W I E. What's his first name? Ah. Uh, man, I I just call it Smoke. Smoke Bowie. Hold on. Let me, let me see. Smoke I, Bowie. Let me see if I can find. That's him. what. That's that's how that's how he's known known for right here. Smoke Bowie. Shoot, we have a buoy up here in my way in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Right now, Wake Forest, West Virginia is after him. He really likes Wake Forest. Yeah, I can't find that shit either. Smoke buoy. What high school do you go to? Hey, what high school? Uh, Bainbridge High. Oh, I can get it right quick because my nephew. Let me text my nephew right quick. I can get his full name. Okay, hello. He's going to get it for you. I think I think 247 Kane's lives in Savannah. I think that's why he's asking. He lives in Savannah? Oh, he up there riding that, um, what's his name? Um, hold on. And Bo, the Lady Canes beat Duke. Yeah, I know. I just told you that. 58-50. Yeah. 58-50. I like that. Oh, I'm happy. Anytime we can Dion. beat Duke in anything, I'm happy. D-E-Y-O-N. Dion Bowie. Yep, there it is. Bam. That's the name right there. Modern Cities. Appreciate it, buddy. Good looking out there. What, what what is it? Dion D E Y O N. Dion Bowie. Yep, five eleven, one sixty five. They everyone they got a crystal ball to Georgia, hundred percent. Man, well, he doesn't even have a Miami uh, offer yet. You know, you know, you know. Kirby is from Bainbridge. Who is the Georgia coach? Kirby. Yeah. 
he 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 went to school in Bayman. He's from Bayman, Georgia. Really? Yeah. You said this I guy... played against I played against Kirby in baseball, man. You said this guy's parents are hundred percent canes. Did you say that? Can't diehards? They, man, they like all of them ride that area like Miami. Mm. I wonder if we can get this kid. Cousins, yep, mine. I mean, are we even offering him? No. He's got, uh, I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you what he's got. He had like Florida State, South Carolina, uh, Georgia. I know Oregon was the first to offer him. His, his last name is spelled B U B U I E. Really? B U I E? Uh huh. I see him. I found him on Twitter. Bam, let's see this kid. Plays basketball too, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sure. We now. think he I won the basketball him. team here. He just got the South Carolina offer a few uh about a week ago. Got Florida State right before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yep. That was right after the championship game. Oh man, this kid's fast, man. Oh, his name is Zion. Z I O N. Zion Bowie. Which one is that? He's got a brother? No, that yeah, he got a brother too, but Zion, that's the one we talk about. That's his name, Zion Bowie. Smoke. So the the Dion is the older brother, huh? Yeah. He and I think he's a sophomore. Yeah, 2022. There's Zion Bowie. Okay, I found him. He, 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 backed up, he backed up the Pearson boy that's down at Florida Gators right now. Damon Pierce. He's running back for George, Florida Gators. Man, both of these guys got a bunch of offers. Yes, sir. They, they bad. Man. Wow. Yo, his brother, the, D the Dion Bowie, man, he's got everything. He's got Tennessee, Georgia, uh, fucking FAU. How did FAU offer him Miami as an offer? That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm sure we'll do what we always do. We'll wait till the last minute. Golly. I think these two kids are twins, man. They're both class of 2022. You think so? They're the same Not class, right. unless one of them got held back before. Nah, you know what, bro? I know what I think it is. I think they cousins. Oh, cousins. That's what it is. I think they cousins. Got you. That would yeah. make sense. Yeah, they play base. They play football and basketball. They ain't good on basketball. Shoot, I'm sure we could take them. Mm -hmm. I know Zion play basketball because I see him play the other day. Mm -hmm. And he I come mean, off the bench. He's been coming off the bench he's been, he's the bench sports, he's been bro? playing football. Go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You see the report, though, where Coach Laranega asked uh, Joe Jackson if he'd come on board since he was still on scholarship to play, and Joe Jackson played in high school, and he turned it down. Really? Yeah, he's not going to play. Yep. He's trying to get ready for the NFL. He's not going to play? Shoot. That's what he told him. He said, no, I'm going to get ready for the draft. Man, no, he goes man, out there and plays of basketball. Guy. Yeah, her type of guy, Joe, pretty hot, man. He was out there in basketball, hurts his knee or something, man. He's screwed, man. Yeah, I don't blame him. 
And you know Mark Rick was trying to put him give him some time on offense at one point. I know. I know. Joe is a freak. I know. Big time. Shit, he can play basketball and just rebound. I ain't worried about the points. Just rebound. We need that physical body in the mid up there up there. Cane I basketball. Know. I know. What's going on, That's Chris Bogle? That Florida State know. game just made me. <sighs> Two four seven. Canes. Tate's waiver will get approved. I hope so. Manuel Soto up there and say the case lawyer is making. I'm sure he's got a good lawyer. He's got a lot of money, man. You need to Tate. Get Tate. Tate gonna get approved. He got a lawyer, and his parents got a lot of money, so that means they got the, probably the best lawyer you can get, like that kid from. You know. Yeah, I have money to go to Bishop Gordon. Shit. Oh, man, they give out scholarships if you're, that, if you're good. Shoot. If you're that good, they're giving out scholarships, man. Man, big time. Oh, well, hey, everyone, uh, thanks for... Yeah, man, I can sit here and do this with y'all all day, man, but Me too. I got them still about, hours. I got to drive tomorrow. I'm, I'm about to get off here, uh... Appreciate you guys calling in. Appreciate you calling in, man. Georgia Kane. Uh, Tommy. Appreciate thanks. it, man. I'll get with y'all boy later, man. We will. And everyone else. Appreciate y'all, man. Yep. Everyone else. We'll see you as soon as the news comes out. And uh, we're out of here.